Hey everybody, it's the Liching Hour. I'm the Lich, and this is Murder She Streamed. Hello, Murder Mavens. Hello. 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 <laughs> v, play just a just a little bit. That's pretty good. Sounds pretty good. How's sound out there? Hi, Jules, Cookie, Shinobi. How's the sound? How's how do I sound? Can you hear V? Nice. Thank you for joining us for a nice cozy Sunday Murder session. Hi, Murder Mavens. All right. Howdy. Allow me to introduce the Murder Mavens, a mystery book club that is a meeting at the top floor of the Candlelight Bookstore every Saturday evening for the last 10 years in Brindlewood Bay. The Murder Mavens are particularly fond of the Gold Crown Mysteries, as many of us are, uh, by Robin Masterson, featuring the globetrotting super sleuth Amanda Delacorte. Let's rejoin our mavens here in this August afternoon and uh, in the afternoon before the Brindlewood County Poker Tournament. Let's start here with Viv. Vivian, would you be so kind to introduce yourself to the viewers again and tell us how you're spending your afternoon? Uh, yes, hello, my name is Vivian and I am a, uh, you might have known me in my 387 credits on my IMDb page. Um, all silent roles are extras, but just as essential, darling. Um, it's beautiful outside, so of course I'm inside, uh, spending my days, you know, admiring my Hollywood-related taxidermy collection. We've got Clark Gable outside and kind of rotting away a little bit. Uh, he's seen better days, but we've got... <laughs> My Marilyn Meow Row, the little kitty by the fireplace, um, also looking worse for wear. But they're family. Oh, they're family, indeed. Um, Dolly, how are you spending your afternoon? Well, howdy. Howdy. Um, well, you can find Dolly Pardon right now on the beach with a small row of children from Brindlewood Bay. Uh, listening to sing along story time, oh. and that's what we've been doing all summer long. Every weekend, I get the the youngsters out, and we're just singing along and we're telling stories. My favorite story, the, the one that we're telling right now, is about the bug who robbed the liquor store. The the bug that robbed robbed the wait <laughs> the yeah. bug that robbed the liquor store. Yeah, it's about a beetle who robbed a liquor store and then stole his daddy's uh pickup truck and then ran from the law. One of my favorite stories of all time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's as really a child, I one. remember that one. I used to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ethel, how how is Hi. how's the podcast going and how are you spending your afternoon? It's going well. Uh, I'm actually currently, you see Ethel in the middle of uh, her bed and she's surrounded by wrappers of like uh, hostess snacks and little Debbies and there's just wrappers everywhere and she's munching away editing like hardcore on her uh, podcast. She's learned a few tricks and uh, her audio has improved significantly. <laughs> Has Ethel gotten into using any AI yet? Ash, uh, yeah. So that was one of the things she just barely found out. She's uh, onto this chat GPT thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is it helping her out quite a bit? Oh, yeah. She's asking it all the useless stuff. But it's it's fun to interact with this thing and have right. it spit out random stuff. And she's using it as a search engine right now. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> oh, nice. You know, yeah. you knew that it was going to be, uh, you know, you get a little quiver that might this might be an odd day because uh, this morning, it's been a little while but since you've gotten one of these, but this morning you got one of those um, mysterious messages on your uh, answering oh. machine from that okay. deep, honestly, kind of sexy, but you don't know who it is voice. Okay. Uh, today, he said, uh, there's a large oak at Bonfire Cliff, the one where everyone carves their initials into. Look for the crossed out name and dig in the moss below it. Promise you won't be disappointed. Okay. A large oak at where did Bonfire you Bonfire Cliff. Bonfire. Now you know Bonfire Cliff, it's a hangout site above the defunct bay quarry. There used to be a quarry there, but now it's just, you know, big open uh, water. Big think um 
Oh, well, I don't know if you've seen Stranger Things, but the first season of Stranger Things, they had the yeah. quarry. Big, and there's a big cliff above it, and up there, there's bonfire. And usually in Homecoming, people go up there. Yeah. Teenagers go yeah. up there, party, yeah. and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. the place. Okay. And last, but certainly not least, Edith, reintroduce yourself Hello. and tell us what you're doing for this afternoon. I am Edith, or Edie Do It. Do it. Uh, and this afternoon, I am doing some work around the house. Uh, my late partner, Vi, took great pride in uh, our home, especially the garden. And despite me not having a green thumb, uh, I have taken great care to try to maintain it since her passing. Uh, I am joined by my grandson, Joey, um, who has been helping me around uh, in between uh, teaching me how to do uh, the, the TikTok dances. Oh. Uh, I suspect, though, that he has been filming me. Um, so look out on, on the Tiki Taki for uh, some some hip and happening uh, moves. Oh, oh. And uh, I think uh, I think Joey has a lot of uh, great prospect as a future lawyer for the state of Massachusetts. So I have been teaching him the bylaws. Nice. Well, that's awesome. Uh, he's eight years old. He's uh, he's eight years old. <laughs> he's already showing aptitude for arguing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got a lot of he's got a lot of spirit. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> um. Okay. So before we get into today's mystery, uh, which is most certainly happened tonight, uh, let's mark a couple end of session things for each of you. So you're uh, automatically this is you know for you guys. I don't think any of you have enough XP to level up. I don't think we've gotten there yet, just yet. But that might happen after this episode. So each of you is going to have the, the box marked, did the murder maven solve a mystery? Because with any luck, you're solving a mystery today, so you'll get an experience point for that. But then there's uh, several others. You're going to pick two uh, and to kind of guide you. And if you complete those at the end of, by the end of the session, you'll get experience points. Um, things are, those kind of things are, did you secretly undermine the authority of a local official? Did you share your wisdom with a young person? Did you share a memory of a late family member? Did you behave like a woman half your age? Did you dote on someone? And finally, did you show someone that you still got it? Now, you don't, uh, hey creep. Uh, you do not have to tell us. In fact, it might be a little more fun if you don't tell us what, which ones you're going for. Just mark them and then we'll know whether or not you completed them after at the end of the show. Can I tell you either way? <laughs> you can tell us what, if you want. <laughs> I want to I behave like a woman half my age, and I want to undermine the authority of a local official. <laughs> Do with that information what you will, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it's not Sheriff Hopper. I don't know, maybe we're getting a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. It a night falls or early evening falls, and you all excitedly head over to the uh, charity tournament. Um. Let's see here. This is a yearly event. It's kind of a big deal. This is the first time you guys have been invited to, though. Um. It's a very. It's. it's very popular of the uh, more the up and coming the posh the old money the the politics but Vivian your sister Bev was like we just because of your guys's um, now a little infamous murder mystery solves in the last year um, they're like you, you're kind of a hot topic in town so Bev thought you know for to help Merle her husband who of course is the mayor of Brindlewood Bay uh, to help him out because he's gonna be running for re-election and you know another, another six months so we thought maybe, you know, make sure, you know, bring out the local celebrities like the Murder Mavens. So for the first time, you've been invited to the Brindlewood County Charity Poker Tournament uh, at the Town Hall. Uh, members of the community are sponsored uh, to play poker. The winnings going to the charity of your choice. As you guys are um, bustling in there and um, going up and getting sat at your tables, 
Uh, let's go around and let's find out who you're playing for. Vivian, uh, what charity are you playing for tonight? Well, it's a very prestigious charity. Uh, Silent Rolls and Essential Extras IMDb Page Assistance. It uh, raises money for young whippersnappers to help set up our IMDb pages and list all of our platitudes and credits. Um, S-R-E-E-I-P-A for short is what I am going for tonight. <laughs> awesome. Now, are you guys all going in Beepus? Or are you you're probably yes. driving separately? Can you all no. sit in Beepus? Well, we've already established that some of us sit in the cab with Dolly, <laughs> and then some of us sit in the back of Beepus. <laughs> Those who don't want to have a seatbelt. Uh, well, Beepus, I, th- I would imagine Dolly has outfitted the the bed of Beepus to be sort of like a um, Appalachian, like whimsical fairy tale situation. I feel does like it have maybe a couch I'm- in the back. Yeah, there's a couch. Um, yeah. It does have it does have a wolf blanket over it. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh, oh, yes. two wolves wolf. howling at a moon. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and I imagine Beepus at this point now has like um, like fake flower garland wrapped around the bed of the truck. It's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's still very <laughs> dusty. The sound, system. The sound <laughs> system, I got two 12 subwoofers in there. Oh. I got two 12 inches. So um, how do you guys decide which one of you rides in the back? Is there a, like a drawing straws or does it, is it a rotation? I, I, I do sit in the back. Okay. I like it back there. Yeah. yeah. The, and the <laughs> yeah. night, the night air, it's buzzing yeah, with it's the great. insects. So, yeah. It's great. That New England night air is pretty nice. Okay. All right. Well, Dolly, uh, which, as you guys are going and discussing what charities you're supporting, which, which one are you supporting? Oh, Dolly Parton is, uh, she is supporting the charity for uh the appalachian uh rehabilitation fund for all of the little creatures the critters creatures and critters just in uh-huh general? well it's specifically for all the raccoons that might need therapy <laughs> oh, okay mental health is really important for raccoons yeah the raccoon community needs the help that needs mm-hmm. the help for sure mm-hmm. all right ethel how about you what's yeah. your charity of choice Voice up. It's uh, getting voices heard and getting technology in the hands of those who can't afford it. Oh. Uh, yeah, voice up stands for voices of inclusion, communication, and empowerment for underprivileged people. Oh, wow. is that a real? Is that a real yeah. charity? It is That's awesome. <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> it is That's now. Really cool. It sounds That's great real. though. <laughs> it's, it's real now. <laughs> it should be. That's cool shit. Yeah. Well, that sounds like you find the next best, uh, you know, award-winning podcaster, right? That's the yeah. idea. Help people out. Yes. Awesome. And Edith, what's your charity? Uh, well, my grandson Joey is quite the avid, uh, avid uh, fan of guinea pigs. Oh. I don't know where this came from, but uh, so we're supporting the Critter Connection, which is a guinea pig rescue uh, charity, which is actually a real that. charity. That's a real one. That's a real one. <laughs> I love that. I love it. It's great. I love it. You know, it's funny because tonight that's your this will be the third charity for creators because you're going to meet someone who's supporting the Brindlewood Finn Newt Sanctuary as well. You'll find that out soon enough. Um, Is that a real charity? The Brindlewood <laughs> Finn Newt Sanctuary. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so you guys pull up and you are ushered into the town hall. The atmosphere is bustling excitement. Is everyone who's anyone in Brindlewood Bay gathers for this tournament. Um, Edith, how has the organizing committee decorated the place so it looks like a night in Monte Carlo? Well... Edie's never been to Monte Carlo, but she has been to the casinos in Atlantic City. Okay. So there's just various tables set up for poker and blackjack and roulette. Uh, Her and uh, Joey have spent, uh, they spent an entire day making uh, slot machines out of cardboard. Oh, okay. Uh, The walls are decorated with golden streamers and blow up palm trees are all around. Oh, very fancy. You know, like the the big ones. Yeah, Yeah, it's super fancy. Uh, there's a lot of like balloons shaped like uh, hearts, spades, diamonds, clubs, uh, and then oversized dice, also made of cardboard, uh, for little appetizer, like as service little appetizer tables. Ooh. Yeah, and the band. It does is... not look fancy. It does not look fancy at all. <laughs> she went to Party City. 
<laughs> Does it look like an eight-year-old helped his grandmother? They yep. did. They did get a band, though, and the band is doing its best to play a steady stream of James Bond movie music to make it feel like Monte Carlo. At least they're uh, imagining, imagining how they imagine Monte Carlo to be. Um, the uh, bartender, uh, there's a little set up right as you go in, serving non-alcoholic drinks, mint coolers, Shirley Temples, uh, cranberry, cranberry fizzes, whatever you'd like. You grab a drink and you get your tables. Maybe you do a little... Um, uh, a little roulette, a little this, but you're going to end up at the main event is playing poker. And that's where you guys are each going to be uh, sat at a table. We're going to go a couple rounds in. You guys are each going to make rolls, but I'm going to describe the tables for you first. At table one, uh, Edith and Dolly, you're sitting there with uh, Merle Barnaby, the mayor, uh, Vivian's uh, brother-in-law. And a one, a, he's a he's a big guy, smarmy grin, expensive suit, you know, bone crushing handshake, charming for sure, but he promises a lot, but never delivers. That kind of you know, pure politician, for sure. Not a terrible fellow, um, by any means, but you know that Vivian doesn't necessarily get along with him. Uh, and then there's Amelia Emerson, uh, tall, lanky, intense stare her slips, well-worn worn clothes. She's, she made sure right away that you know that she is um, an amateur newt enthusiast. Now, Dolly, you guys have been sitting at this table for a little while playing poker, and you just told one of your favorite stories about your days in Appalachia, and you got the table laughing. But you noticed something about Amelia that seemed a little odd. What was that? Well, she didn't laugh. She didn't laugh. She's very, she's very fidgety, but she didn't laugh at my jokes. Um, and Dolly finds that very odd because Dolly knows that she is hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, and then over at table two, we got Ethel and Vivian. You all are sitting there with Tony Martinez. Uh, I think uh, middle mid thirties, tweed jacket. Uh, uncupped hair. Even though he's got the tweed jacket, he doesn't seem, still doesn't seem to be put together that well. Uncupped hair, kind of nervous. He's a math teacher at the local uh, high school, and he did win the last year's tournament, so the pressure's on this year. Um, especially because there's this buzz. Um, somehow the planning committee had got Ace Rogers, a uh, an ex-pro uh, gambler, poker player, to come and be like like the the big celebrity of tonight, yeah. he's playing at uh, table three. He's not playing with you guys, but there's there's mixed feelings amongst the players. And Tony, you can see, might be a little I don't know, might be a little nervous about it. And then also sitting there with you, which overshadowing uh, Tony's nervousness and making it a little bit cold is Maria Prescott, older lady, about around your ages. Uh, twin set, pearls, condescending gaze, old money. Okay, <laughs> she's part of the family that's been around in Brindlewood for a long time. Way too much perfume. Um, Vivian, she just asked you something that was like kind of terribly personal and presumptuous. Uh, what might have that been? And how did I you? I think answer? she asked. <laughs> I think she asked where my husband has been. <laughs> Uh, the oil tycoon that's gone missing. <laughs> um, you I found think your she husband like, oh, yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you found your <laughs> husband yet? <laughs> oh, jeez. And I'm like feeling it too because my husband is also missing. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So this is this is very rough oh, at this table. You know, it's funny. She asked that you go to answer too, Ethel, when you realize that she's staring at Viv. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because everybody knows that, like, my husband left me. I think he's missing, but he's yeah. gone. Like, he just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, we don't know. You know, I, I, I walk the widow's with the widow's walk every night, looking out over the bay for him to return home to me. Any day now, I've. I've kept his I've kept his trophy collection clean and shiny for his return. 
It's funny. Anyway. Maria immediately wishes she hadn't asked because she's like, <laughs> she was like being kind of a bitch about it, and it wasn't expecting. <laughs> and you start going, and she's like, oh, I wish I hadn't. Asked. <laughs> you, you going on it? She's like, I asked the wrong one. Like, <clears throat> and she wants to get back to playing. Um, just then, a uh, a fellow uh, by your ear, Viv, uh, asked you, "How is the, uh, how is what you're eating? What what are you eating, Ethel? What did you pick up from the snack bar? It's all oh, freshly I... freshly made things." Yeah, I made most of it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. They, they they've had this place catered, oh. and you picked up something oh, from okay. the bar. What was it? Um. So, I. Oh, so the uh, pigs in a blanket. They're little pigs in a blanket. They're the hot dogs wrapped in the the biscuits. Picked how, up a few of those. how are the piggly They're mini ones? How are the piggly wigglies? And then uh, you look up and there's this big dude, tattooed hands, chef's whites, clean cut though. This is Mike Taylor, the caterer. How, uh, how, are, how are the Piggly Wigglies? They're, they're, they're good. They're great. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for ladies. checking. Good, 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 good. And then he goes over to the next table, asks you, Dolly and Edith, you two, if you're enjoying, if there's anything else he gets you. You know, they're the... Um, uh, the gluten-free ones are on the blue plates, the cupcakes, in case any of you need to know that. Dolly looks um, personally offended that he would offer her gluten-free anything. <laughs> and I want i want you to he know that Dolly... gives you a long, is, slow wink. <laughs> Dolly is not dressed nicely. Well, she's not in dress. She's in an all-white rhinestone and fringe leather, like, suede jacket and matching pants uh with rhinestone uh boots and spurs and a pink cowboy hat that's like a 10 gallon hat and she lifts her her 10 gallon hat up to look at him and she says how fucking dare you (laughs) and you've never heard dolly curse like that she hates gluten-free things (laughs) he that doesn't change him he still gives you a slow wink and then uh moves along Seems unfazed. He seems the kind of man that's been through some shit, has a past for sure. He he was like in the middle of eating like a piggly wiggly, and she hears Dolly curse, and she just like the it just like drops out of her mouth. (laughs) Dolly's taking this this poker tournament very seriously. She's really into poker. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Well, let's get to it. Dolly and Edith, we're gonna have. uh, Well, everybody's gonna make the roll. We'll start with Dolly. Uh, okay. You're gonna make a roll. You're gonna roll with either composure or reason, whichever you like, whichever's better for you. Oh, both are very, both are good. I, I have a one in both. I think, yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and um, roll first, and we'll see how well you do playing poker at the table. Can I get an advantage on this if I have a flashback of my fondest memory of my late partner? Oh, if you want to spend a crown. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can roll, then decide to spin the crown. The, cr- okay. the crown will allow you to go one level up. So as long as you roll a seven to eight, um, or seven to nine, you'll be able yeah. to get to a ten. Okay. Woo! What'd you it's get? a ten. Is that two nice. fives on the die? And then... It's two fives on the die. Plus one, so an eleven. Eleven? Um, yeah. Let me tell you right now, if you, if you want to spin that crown... You will make it to the final round. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, which crown do you want to spend? I want to be having a flashback with my fondest memory of my late partner. I'm going to think about all those nights out in Appalachia with the the cicadas, cicada in the crickets cricketing out on the the front porch, and we're playing poker together. And he taught me how to play poker real good when we were just a young married couple, and we we're so in love and just. Just having a great time and all that strawberry wine. <laughs> all that strawberry wine? Okay. So mark that flashback. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mark the flashback, and you did considerably well. Um, very well. You it, you like playing poker. It can you can, it shows. You want a significant? Oh, you got to choose one. Um, you can either make a significant amount of money for your charity. You or you can learn something about one of your competitors at your table, or three, you ensure that one of the competitors at your table loses. 
and you'll make it to the final round. So it's one of those ah. three. Dolly takes this real ser seriously, and she is going to make sure that that woman who didn't laugh at her joke does not make it to the final round. <gasps> so Amelia is not going to make it. Definitely going to lose. Okay. <laughs> Edith, let's roll for you. Okay. It's just the base roll, right? Uh, indeed. Yep. Oh, you can add composure or reason. Uh, I'm going to add reason because that is my better one. Seven. <laughs> Seven. Um, okay. You can make a significant amount of money for your charity. Uh, you could learn something about one of the competitors at your table. Or you can ensure that when somebody else doesn't win, it can't be Dolly. Hmm. Now, I think that we know that Viv doesn't like her brother-in-law. That's probably not a well-kept secret. Right. So I'd like to learn something about Merle. You're watching him. You're watching him closely. You're interested about him, right? Yeah, this is probably the first time you've actually got, like, some... It's not even personal time, but some close time with him, as close as it could be. But you notice, you get this impression that he's really bad at bluffing or lying, maybe. Uh, he could sure be charming, but he doesn't seem to be so good at the bluffing. I mean, you're able to tell right away every time when he's trying to bluff. It's not like he has one sign he's or tell. He's like one big I tell. Start <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move over to table two. Vivian, you want to yes. make that roll? I do want to make that roll. Let's see. Ooh, that's a seven. Seven. All right, so you get the same choice. You could win a bunch for your charity, learn something about one of your competitors, or make sure someone does not win. Um, I would love to know more about... That conniving snake, Maria Prescott. Yes. Specifically, are her pearls real, darling? Um, she, you keep watching her steal looks over at that Ace Rogers at the other table. Uh, Ace is a striking mm. gentleman. He looks like, uh, he looks like straight out of a gangster movie. He's uh, got a... Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, maybe a little... He's got a little Bogartism to him. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, maybe a scar on his on his cheek a little bit. He looked like he, he could be either a private dick or a gangster. Uh, but she mm. keeps looking... She doesn't seem particularly happy at all that this gentleman is here. For the, for the way that she keeps mm. putting, uh, sending nasty looks their way. I'll keep my eye on her and that handsome scamp over at <laughs> she's staring three. down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the deliciousness at table three. And Ethel. Yeah, okay. Let's roll. Let's roll it. Ooh. A ten? Ooh, and what's your uh, uh what's your plus. composure or reason? Uh, let's see. I think they're the same. Yeah, one. they're the same. Yeah. Now, did you want to spend a crown to get to the next round, the final round, or just be happy with winning, making the choice between the three things? I'm happy with just this. this All game. right. Winning a bunch of money, finding something out about somebody, or making sure somebody else does not make it to the next round. Uh, yeah, this Jason that's got the tweed and the yeah. unkept hair, I would like to know more about them. Oh, yes. Uh, Tony Martinez. Um, they, uh, he seems to be, uh, for what you took for maybe being ner just a nervous person moved to maybe he's just nervous about this Ace Rogers being there to he seems uh, like deeply pressured like there you're noticing some things that are a little because you like you pay attention to people that's your thing uh, all of you do and you're, you're noticing some like there's something deeper there's a deeper amount of pressure here the guy's very Tony? high strung uh, Tony, yeah. I thought it was Jason. <laughs> That's okay. 
<laughs> it is now. It's Tony <laughs> Jason Martinez. Okay, love it. Tony okay. Jason. <laughs> It's a family name called PJ. It's a family name, yeah. So the 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 as we're still playing the so the people who organize this event are called the Society of the Kindly Ones, and uh, they're the ones who throw the one this every year, and uh, you know the every now and then you hear murmuring, murmuring Ace Rogers, mama. They got him from uh, from Vegas and. Uh, uh, some people are excited. Some people, uh, as you see, aren't, aren't so excited. But the tables come around. Everybody's like, we announced the winners for the final, uh, for the final round. And of course, it's Ace Rogers. Uh, it's our own Dolly Parton. Um, to Tony slash Jason made it uh, again to the final round. Um, and uh, and surprisingly enough, uh, Merle uh, made it to the final round. So. Uh, all right, so everybody, uh, they, they kind of, um, there's a slight break where you all go get some munchies and stuff like that, use their facilities, that kind of thing. Um, uh, I'm going to ask you this. While we take that break, you find out that there was a scandal that rocked last year's poker tournament. Um, who was involved? Anybody know what it was? What did we find out? Hmm. <gasps> um, was Tony uh, suspected of counting cards as a math teacher? Oh. <gasps> oh. Interesting. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's good. Maybe that's why he's so uh, frazzled. Huh, interesting. Interesting. So you find out those little rumors, and you're, you're hearing about that. But then the the clink 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 clink. We'd like the uh, final round players to come to the table, please, in the front. Dolly, Ace Rogers, uh, Jason, and Tony, uh, and then Merle. All you guys all sit down at the table, and the um, the the dealer for your session comes up. She starts doing this little show of shuffling the deck, fanning the cards, doing her thing, and then she deals out the first hand, and suddenly the lights go out. <gasps> I can't see. I don't have my glasses no. on. Merle, this is your fault. <laughs> Two ah. shots ring out. Two shots ring out. The l and then the lights come back on. Everybody looks around. There's a scream from somebody. Ace, you look. Ace Rogers has been shot dead at the table. Oh. oh I'll do gosh. mouth to mouth. <laughs> 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 Vivian runs over to give mouth to mouth to the dead man. <laughs> Don't <shot>. worry, Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> We're gonna play this little scene out. Everyone's in <laughs> shock. Vivian's doing her best to bring him back to life. My constitution. <laughs> Suddenly, the uh, the caterers there at your side, Vivian, gently takes your arm. And she's like, "Ma'am, I think you're gonna have to step back. This is this is evidence now." And he kind of pulls you back a little bit. And uh, within moments, the the police are there. Sheriff Hopper comes in with uh, Wendell, our favorite. Um, our favorite deputy. Oh, we love Wendell. Yeah, coming in, Wendell. Nice yeah, sees you guys, gives you a little nod, and uh, asks everybody. They ask for everybody to stay put. Everybody who's here, please stay as we get a feel for the scene. Um, while the cops are asking everybody questions, what are you ladies doing? Dolly's gonna hunt down Wendell. Oh. <laughs> Wendell's nervously next to Sheriff Hopper, trying to keep up with taking notes for him. Uh, yeah, yes. And he, he Dolly, sees you, gets all red, immediately red. Uh, Dolly how, can't help this? herself. Yeah, she can't help herself in this in this getup. She feels you can't tell her nothing. Uh, this is not the time, Wendell, to talk about Beepus, but he's fine, thank you. Uh, I know that you just got here like 30 seconds ago, but I think that man's been shot dead. 
Yes, that's exactly what's happened, Dolly. Are you? Why don't you get yourself a refreshment or some? Go ahead. It's gonna be might be a long night here. Uh, we'll, we'll, sh 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 Sheriff Hopper will be right over to give you uh, to uh, find out your side of the story. Got it. And then she does a finger gun at him, going. <laughs> and walks <Yeah>. away. <clears throat> All right, rest of you. Um, everybody else is stunned. Um, so they, uh, let's let's recap. You look around, and let's recap who we ha see here. Um, the only people present at the time of the two shots that rang out. Okay, we have you guys, of course. Uh, we have Merle, uh, and oh, uh, Viv, your sister Bev comes rush rushing in just before the cops. Merle, baby, are you okay? It's like, yes, darling, I find a terrible, terrible event here. And, uh, so we've got Merle and Bev. And then we've got mm -hmm. Amelia, the newt fancier. Uh, we have Mike, Mike, the caterer. We have, uh, uh, at table three, you guys didn't get a chance to uh, meet the people at table three, but it was Ace Rogers, the now deceased. But it was also uh, Danny Walsh, the uh, reporter for the Brindlewood Beacon. Sharp eyes, charming smile, constantly taking notes. She's already like writing in her own journal. Uh, Maria Prescott, of course, the old money lady, who's got a suspiciously large bag with her. I don't know if it's suspicious, actually. It's normal. It's a big old purse. Um, Tony Martinez, of course. Uh, Tony Jason Martinez. Martinez. Uh, and the, <laughs> the other person at table three that you guys didn't get to meet was Dan Gardner, property developer. Well-dressed, balding, always checking his phone. Seems like he's always, he's always moving, moving, moving. Uh, and that's it. And then it's just you guys. Well, um, would I, um, I would like to try to like examine body a little bit uh i'd like to see from which direction the bullets might have come from right right let's do let's do uh, a meddling move while sheriff hopper isn't yet um coming over to ask you questions we'll find you've got a chance to kind of check things out uh that is going to be oh whichever one you can whichever ability you think is appropriate I would imagine reason's probably appropriate for that. Reason will work. <laughs> Did she think of anyone? Mortal. So that's gonna be a nine? Nine. Um Okay. Alrighty. One moment, please. There's gonna be uh so with a nine, you uh You, there's a complication, either with the clue or yeah, a complication you counter while searching for it. So let me figure that out which ones that's going to be. Uh, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm probably uh, like, he fell over dead. So I'm kind of like, I look at the wound on his body and I'm kind of like lining it up. And then I like kind of like take a seat in the chair and kind of try to figure out like from which direction it might have gone. Right, 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 right. Oh. oh. Okay. Um, you just then, as um, as you're uh, getting into it to kind of figure this stuff out, suddenly Sheriff Hopper is right there. Uh, Edith, Edith. Um. I know you know how much respect I have for you ladies. You know I have like mm -hmm. utmost respect. But you're going to have to let mm -hmm. me do my job right now. I know what you're doing. You're trying to look for stuff. I'm going to have to ask that you guys take a seat over here because you all are suspects. You realize what? that, right? I, well, you were here at the time of the shooting. You were here. Lights went out. There was a shot. I hate to say it, but, it, you know, this doesn't look too good. I have to make sure that, you know, we do, we dot our I's and cross our T's. And I'm going to have to be asking questions. And I'd like you to not be trying to solve the case while I'm trying to solve the case just yet. Now, let me move ah. you over here. And as you're moving away, you notice blood uh, 
uh, on his um, on the on Roger's thigh. Mm-hmm. He's got there was uh, two shots that rang out. You could see the blood on his chest, but one's on his thigh, like it came from either this angle or from below the table. Mm. <gasps> like he's got shot in his inner thigh. There's a lot of blood f- flowing from his from his leg. Wait. Uh, a bullet Edie's hole gonna, in like, an unexpected location. Edie's going to be like aghast that like she's even considered a, a suspect. Uh, and she, as, as uh, Hopper is leading her away, she's just going to be like mumbling and rambling. Do you think an old lady, old frail woman like myself would be able to handle a gun? Please, Sheriff Hopper. Okay, Edith, I, I know, I know. You know what? Tell you what, let's get your statement now. And then you can get back, and I don't want anybody leaving now. I don't want to try to keep people here as long as possible. I know we're not going to be able to keep them all night, but I got to get everybody's thing. And you can you could snoop around all you like, but I need to your statement. From your viewpoint, what happened? Well, Dolly and Merle and Tony and Ace were at the table, and they were just about to begin the final round, and the lights went out, there were two shots, and the next thing we know, Ace was dead on the floor, Viv was trying to give him mouth-to-mouth. Clearly <laughs> wait, unsuccessfully, oh. but... Wait, wait, wait. Vivian was giving him mouth-to-mouth. She... Something about Humphrey Bogart. I don't... She... There... Okay. She's an okay. odd woman. Okay. I could have saved him! <laughs> <laughs> you just hear that in the background. I could have saved him! <laughs> Sheriff Hopper is going to come around and ask each one of you ladies uh, your take on it. Is there anything you want to add or subtract? or? Yeah. What's it couldn't down? have been Dolly. I left my gun at home. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your hands, Dolly. She shows him her new manicure. <laughs> yeah, there's no, no powder burns or anything. I don't know if that's yeah. True. That's I told really you powder. It yeah, yeah. It is. Well, first of all, I don't own a handgun. Second of all, I own a shotgun. Third of all, it's at home. Okay, Dolly. All right. Yes, Miss Pardon. Okay. I'm very upset about this. Ethel, Viv, Viv. Anything you'd like yes. to add to the story? No, I'm sitting there snacking still. I feel very slackish lately. <laughs> I'm snacking and I'm writing in my little notebook because now I keep a little notebook on me for my podcast because I got smart about that. Right, right. Because <laughs> I seem to forget lots of details, so I'm writing in my notebook. Okay. Mouth to mouth. We're <laughs> on a shot suspect. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Vivian, what possessed you to give this man CPR or mouth to mouth? And have you not seen the movies, darling? True love's kiss brings anybody back. True, true love, true love. Window goes. We had something. <laughs> we had a couple, a couple glances across the table. It's love. Oh. Well, I want to. <laughs> well, my condolences, oh. Vivian, for. I believe you're, well, <gasps> my condolences for where we are now. All right, Thank well, you. I, you know, it's really hard. Ladies, I uh, thank you very much for giving me your statement. Uh, I will, don't go too far. Don't leave, as you know, don't leave Bernoulli Bay in the next few days while we try to get this figured out. But you are, you are free to do whatever you'd like. Now, the town hall is a pretty big place. Um, the, uh, well, there's the, the the bigger audience hall where you are now, and then there's the more administrative part of, my administrative part of it. And then there's, you know, the mayor's office, there's a kitchen, there's a basement, too. These are all locations in this one building. Now, when the lights went on or off and it came back on and the shots happened, uh, before the cops got there, there was, um, nobody left. There was, a um, uh, Mike, the caterer. Oh, no, no, it wasn't Mike. It was uh, Merle. Merle was good about making sure. He's like, nobody leave. We're sending the cops here. And your sister had run in. But uh, Viv, your sister Bev had run in. But uh, the, there was some scattering of people going to the bathroom. There was, you know, obviously upset and coming back. And uh, so 
there you as you're telling Hopper about what had happened or remembering, you there is that time from the shots to the cops getting here where you weren't necessarily keeping track of everybody. You know, you're still like, um, oh my gosh, a little bit in shock and stuff. So we'll just keep that in mind now that Sheriff Hopper's taken your statement and you are free to do as you like. But he asked you to stay away from the body. It is a police matter for now. So he's got the, they've got the table kind of surrounded right now with the cops as they're studying the, the body. Well, Hello, how Vancouver. dare they? We're the, we're the murder mavens. Ladies, we should, we should go covert. I want to see who went to the bathroom. Really? Also, did, is there a murder weapon? Do we have the murder weapon? There is no murder weapon to be found yet. No. I'm going to go in the bathroom and I'm going to be looking in them stalls. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm taking my good friend Edith with me. Now, Bloody system, always. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're doing it together. Um, all right, let's, um, I don't know if I, I don't know. you know, screw it, we'll make it, somewhere we'll make, else? oh, no, 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 I'm just trying to decide if we'll make it a night move or just make it a meddling move because you're searching for a clue. Oh, yeah. So let's, let's do the meddling move. Let's do. Okay. All right, I'm Seven. rolling. Now you're checking the woman's bathroom? Welcome to the check? dungeon. I'm checking the boys' bathrooms. Vendorsa one. Thank you for joining the dungeon. What hey, did, Chris. What did we roll there? That's a nine on the die, so a six and a three. All right, um, and you get to add your an ability. Yeah, can I check? What about reason? Sure, reason works. Okay, so it's a ten total. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> All right, now. You, uh, you had seen that now. The reason why you went in the bathroom, that you, you're a fan of the Godfather movies, I'm sure, Dolly Parton, right? You'd seen this one thing, you'd always remembered it how Michael Corleone had hid the gun in the bathroom, was able to go in there and get it and come back out and shoot. And so, you're like, you always want to check the toilets, the toilets, and so, the toilets, yeah, yeah. Now, tell me which bathroom are you in when you find this. The boys' bathroom. You're in the boys' bathroom, and you look behind the toilet, but no, no gun stash there. But then you're like, you know what? I'm gonna lift up the thing. You lift up the thing, and in sure as hell, <gasps> in the tank, you see a gun. Uh, Submerged look, in the water. I look at I look at yeah. Edith, and I and I say, D you got you got your handkerchief, honey. I left mine in the in the, the truck. I'm gonna pull a hanky out of my vest pocket. Is it? You it's a want me to pitch butt. it out of the toilet? I'll, or? I'll get out the toilet, baby. But is this important to you? This handkerchief? Uh, I, I'm gonna like look at it. Uh, there's a little bit of snot on it, but no. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll just figure if it was one of your nice ones that you know, that your 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 wife had given you, I would have. Oh no no no. Okay I, okay I, okay. Uh, okay. Those, those, those stay at home. Okay, and then she's Look gonna take for the, the, the boogies. Yes. And she's going to take her handkerchief and she's going to fish out the gun out of the toilet, the turlet. And oh, she's going to, uh, yeah, and she's going to look what we got. And she's going to run out with the gun in hand <laughs> to Hoppers. I got the gun! Sheriff sure, Hoppers. <laughs> Holy. Oh, right. thank, you. thank you very much, Dolly. He's going to take that off your hands for you. Give it right to Wendell. Wendell, get this in a bag and get it marked. Good job, Dolly. Good job. We may have yeah. found the murder weapon. I reckon I did. Um, Are we on the case now? <laughs> you ladies, you you know you've done a great 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 job tonight. Um, you know what? Yeah, if you'd look around a little bit more while I keep everybody kind of here, that would actually be a help. Thank you. You're not on the case. I'm not deputizing you. You know the drill. Well, we're already you get in trouble. I don't know your heart. So. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> what if we need you, though? What if what if we're in a certain type of trouble that we need you? No, that kind of trouble doesn't come. Well, then we are investigating murder, aren't we? You know what? You're right. You ladies need to be safe. I can't in good conscience have you ladies wander around here while there's a murderer uh, abroad. Why don't you go on home? No. no. I said, 
is the complete opposite goal. I don't... Sheriff Hopper, where were you at the time of the murder? Yeah. <laughs> just to clear, just to clear your name. <laughs> We can't have the murderer investigating the murder. I always agree with <laughs> Viv's methods, know, but I, I, I agree with like your statement. He, Wendell, goes, Wendell this. stutters. He, he, he was at the police station. Wendell, where were you, baby? looking at you like... A likely <laughs> so you story. You both are corroborating likely your story. whereabouts. <laughs> you know what? It happened in the pale blue eye where he was investigating his own... <laughs> his own crime. Murder. So, yeah. <laughs> He, he committed the crime, and then he was investigating it. It could be a thing. Just saying. <laughs> See? Ethel knows what we're talking about. Hopper looks yeah. like, uh, maybe you all could go to the coffee shop or something. Maybe go to your maybe go to your headquarters and put up some notes or something. Look, I don't I got don't. time. I got more people to talk to. Go ahead. I, you guys, I hope to see you guys. To, somehow I'll, be, I'll just stay stay in Brindlewood Bay next couple days. He goes off. That was going to look at y'all. He's say. acting suspiciously. What is his problem? We're not leaving. Or, like, we'll He's leave. By us. Is it because we're smarter than him? It's Maybe. because we do his job better than him. Yeah, but that Wendell, he do wash a good truck. We could have a new temporary headquarters under the table. And I, like, gestured to the table we're at. Like, he won't see us here. It's like we're not here. Edie sort of shrugs and will start to crawl under the table. Yeah. <laughs> Dolly will go under the table. Are we reconvening <laughs> under the Come table? On. Okay. Yeah. I thought we uh, need your notes. <laughs> okay, yeah. I've got all my notes and I'll share them with you. <laughs> <laughs> While we're under here, do we notice anything? Uh, oh. should, we, should we take a look around? Like, yeah. Is, is there blood splatter underneath here? Oh, I was thinking more like a snack. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, I have like reason? I brought the snacks, the snack tray oh, down. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's, is there like a bullet, like bullet casings or anything? Um, mm -hmm. underneath your uh, underneath table number two was not the killer table. Um, while you guys are under there, you hear um. Uh, you hear uh, Sheriff Hopper here. Thank you very much for taking your statements. Um, those of you, uh, please do not leave Brindlewood Bay in the next few days. We will be getting back to you. Um, and then you hear Merle go, oh, Can I talk to you, uh, Sheriff Hopper? And you're like, uh, yeah. yeah, but the rest of you, and uh, you see Feats leaving. They're starting to clear out of the... Uh, oh, and, uh, and the corner, corner uh, thing comes in as people are leaving in order to collect the body. This is all happening while you guys are snacking under the table. Uh, can I like oh. peer out uh, to to like sort of watch like watch uh, Merle and the sheriff talk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. You're gonna try to listen. Yeah, I wanna I wanna try to listen. I also wanna see if I can get a, a beat on Pearl uh, or on Merle because I know his tales. I know if he's lying. Oh right, 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 right. Okay, okay. Oh, let's take the meddling move. Uh-oh. Stinky. Oh, no. Plus two is six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, duh. You just can't hear him. He, uh, he turned, Merle turns, and he's talking Can to I... Hopper. And uh, you just can't hear what he's saying. Or see his face. But uh, How does the... hmm. I was gonna say, could I like have shit face? Um, <laughs> I'm just he's, he's he's always with me, uh, it's in spirit as well as physically. Uh, could I have shit face sort of like meander out and sort you of think he's gonna hear what Sam waiting to tell you? No, 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 not like a fine familiar sort of thing, but like, oh. I want him to kind of like circle around Merle and like sort of like rub up against him to kind of get him to like burn. Like if Merle's like, oh, a cat and. <laughs> um. Okay, you, all right, we'll see. All right, all right, I got you. Why don't you roll another D6 and we'll do advantage and we'll, you got two twos. Maybe that D6 will be the advantage given you We have two roll. twos. Two Well, I mean, were we supposed two -two. to wear two twos? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so four two six plus two is a 
eight. Okay, eight will do it. Eight does it. Um. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Okay, 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 okay. You hear, um, all right, you don't hear a lot. You do see, you see, you, the cat does, and uh, Merle looks down and, oh, who let that cat in here? Hello, little buddy. He goes down, he picks up shit face, and, um, he's turning to talk to the Sheriff Hopper. You hear him mention, um, Maria Prescott's name, Maria, and something about, um, the, the, the trouble and the past, and, uh, uh, and, and, and you get the impression that he uh, he's telling him he shouldn't have to worry about that um, about the trouble in the past with Maria and Ace Rogers uh, he said that but because you're picking up on him you can tell he's not telling the truth or, or at least the whole truth mm-hmm. to Sheriff Hopper he seems to be kind of um, maybe Stick it up for Maria in a way, you know, saying, "Oh, this is you, you don't have to worry about the stuff of the past. It's not going to incriminate her." But then um, he looks over. Uh, he just Sheriff Hopper just happens to look over and go, "Edith, are you under that table? What the hell?" And he gonna, also, also that comes up. He's like, Wendell puts up and the tablecloth. And then I'm going to scurry out the other way. <laughs> all you little old ladies underneath the table. He's like, "Are you Snacking. all underneath this table? What are you doing?" Snacking. No <laughs> worry about it. Y'all gonna have to leave. Come on now. We got we gotta get home. We're getting the body out of here. The body's getting out here right now, and it's time it's time for you murder makers to go home. Maybe you should mind your business. I don't know why we're being mean to Hopper right now, but I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> Vivian's like, Merle, you don't even like cats. Nope. <laughs> What would you guys like to do? Uh, let's um, let's uh, let's get you out of there. Uh, have you gone? Have you gone home, or maybe you've gone over, maybe to the coffee shop? Um, yeah. The one owned by a jelly gato. Uh, what's it called? The bean. The bean. The bean. I think it's the, bean. the bean. Would you go to yeah. the bean, or would you go yeah. back to the Murder Maven headquarters? Hear me out. It is. It's August. Dolly. Has a has a cool bottle of strawberry wine sitting at the house. Can we go to Dolly's house and sit on the porch and discuss? Okay. Yes, is the yeah. pool boy there? You mean Wendell? Wendell's your pool boy? Yeah, he looks so different out of uniform. <laughs> it's because I make him do it in a speedo. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and by pool, it is an above ground pool that Dolly has. It's not very big. <laughs> I was literally just imagining like a, a blow up kitty pool. No, it's no, it's an it's an above ground pool. Um, it is a distinctive green color in the water. Oh, he's not a very good pool boy. No, because Dolly's too busy chasing him around. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'd so you're to. all we're, we're cut. We cut to uh, you're sitting around Dolly's uh, ample porch, drinking some fine strawberry wine and a. Uh, August evening in Brindlewood Bay. Uh, what um what are we discussing about the events that happened tonight? Who the hell shot that man? Who did indeed shoot that man? Uh, Viv. Yes. Do you know your brother-in-law's relationship with that Maria Prescott? He seemed to be trying to vouch for her, but he was lying. That was the first I heard of it. Viv always dotes on him like he's the most loyal man ever, but you know he has a wandering eye. Now, to be fair, Maria is quite a bit older. Like, she's maybe a little even older than you guys. Um, But, you know, I don't know. She doesn't seem like the type that someone romances, but, you know, who knows? Each their own. But then again, Viv, I know, just doesn't like him, so of course he's He's yeah. probably wanting to get in her pants. <laughs> it's exactly. She is rich. She, extremely. And, you know, she's a lady of the night. 
We all know this. <laughs> oh, she's a whore. <laughs> she's a tramp? The lady's a tramp. Wait. <laughs> But, so, you obviously, know. you guys are suspects. Uh, you've got a kind of vested interest in this case and figuring out who did it because you don't want you don't want to ruin any kind of relationship. Sheriff Hopper, make, make him think that maybe it was one of you. He, he knows better. But still, you whether you li he likes it or not, you are on this case. What's your next yes. move? We got to sneak back in. I think we need to talk to the other suspects. <laughs> We need to talk okay. to Maria. Okay, okay. She is sus suspicious as heck. I want to talk to that Amelia lady as well. She didn't think my joke was funny. Oh. No, that's... That's the it, crime. Clearly, that's the real crime. <laughs> clearly, she's a sociopath. Truly, I'm one of the funniest people that I know. Do you think we should talk to Danny Walsh, too? As a reporter, she might have the scoop or an advantage on... Uh, getting the what do the kids call it? Four one one. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, do we think we're going to retire for tonight and maybe start the day out tomorrow, um, or there's anything else you want to do tonight? I'd say it's about uh, nine thirty, ten ish. I want to go check out the the large oak at Bonfire Cliff. Oh, at night. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, just you or anybody going with you? You tell uh, us. Yeah, if you tell us, I will go with you. I, I don't yeah. want yeah. people wandering alone into the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will tell these guys, uh, look, I gotta go check a thing at Bonfire Cliff. Uh, I got a weird voicemail. I, I'm still getting those, so I'm gonna go check that out. And then, the one with the sexy voice. Yes, that mm. one. Well, to be you want a ride, honey? Uh, yeah. If, if yeah, let's do it. You yeah, I've only have... had one, I've only had one bottle of wine. It's fine. Oh, will you put it on speaker while we're on our way? I'd love to hear that voice again for research. Yeah, okay, the entire yeah. way on repeat on loop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I really hope. I really, ho I really yeah, hope I our, our... Put it through the subwoofers. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it through the tail ventures. <laughs> I really hope that our uh, our narrator can be able to do that on loop. Do oh. do oh the, <laughs> the, the voicemail. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll do I'll do it right now. Uh, what I want to do is you guys think about what's or I'll have because since Ethel's uh, Ethel Jesus why do I keep saying it Ethel what? is leading this. I want to um you to think about what's. What's the worst thing you think could happen with you going up to uh, Bonfire Cliff at night? Well, Dolly is a bottle in, so I'm a little worried that There's a large we... oak at Bonfire Cliff, the one everyone carves their initials into. Look out, look for the crossed out name and dig in the moss below it. You won't be disappointed. There's a large oak at Bonfire Cliff. <laughs> The one everyone carves their initials into. Look for the crossed out name and dig in the moss below it. You won't be disappointed. Oh boy, ladies, ladies. There's a large oak at Bonfire Cliff. The one everyone carves their initials into. Uh, Edie has a, a firm grasp on the, on the oh shit handle in, in Dolly's yeah. truck right now. <laughs> I'm Don't worry, the transmission's about to go out, but I got, I'll get Wendell to fix it next week. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Ethel, as you start going up, the winding up the uh, the mountain uh, road to go there, what do you suddenly get a pang in your stomach, like a little bit of anxiety? What are you worried about? Uh, the the dolly's a uh, bottle in already, and <laughs> just driving. It's a little <laughs> crazy, and I'm on the I am on the couch in the back, so it's I'm like being all knocked around. And <laughs> Dolly does have a and, suspicious styrofoam cup with straw in the front seat. <laughs> okay, yeah, the, the, just that we wreck. <laughs> Can I just take the cup and just... Or like, that I fly out the back. No, Dolly's got, a, Dolly's got it. Uh, she has the cup, like, in one hand as she's steering. So she's steering like this. And doing the clutch and, and the, the, the gear yeah. shifter in the other hand. She's a really good driver. 
I'm I'm also afraid that I just we hit something just wrong and I kind of like fly out of the back of this out of beepus. <laughs> no, see, Dolly fastened some some ratchet straps to the back as well, oh, so you okay. can hold on to those if you need to. Dolly reminds me of somebody who, if like who at every opportunity will talk about the history of NASCAR and like Appalachia and yeah. Like, well, talking and, about like grassroots movement of like yeah oh yeah her daddy was a miner her daddy was a miner and he was a coal miner um and uh, i imagine cletus was probably also a coal miner and she does exclusively call her styrofoam cup the road soda <laughs> the road soda regardless of what's in it <laughs> soda do you have like a swirly <laughs> straw yeah and it's it's neon pink and stained with lipstick on the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, would you give us a night roll, please? Yeah. A night move roll. So that'll be. Let's see. Uh, what ability do you want to add? To, ooh. What a, I got a ten. Yeah. Fuck what yeah. ability do you want to add to it? Do you got a plus two? No, I've only got composure and reason is one. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, okay. You hold on. You hold on. It's good. No no event. Dolly takes you right up to the uh, bonfire cliff, and you pull up. Just to remember, the, the moon is high above, big and fat, and it, uh, the uh, lighthouse of Brindlewood Bay is just, like, that's one of the coolest things about Bonfire Cliff is that you see the lighthouse just right up against the moon. And uh, the bonfire pit, there's nobody there. It's, uh, uh, the bonfire pit hasn't been used. Uh, and But that big oak tree is there. And you know just the one because that's the one that everybody carves their initials into. Uh, it doesn't take you long to look around the bottom. You guys got a flashlight out looking. And you find um, there is a, um, a set of initials with one of the initials in a heart. And one of the, you know, kind of like the you know, plus whatever. And one of the initials is crossed out. The other initials are TL, T dot L dot heart, and then savage. These are, the other initials are savagely crossed, crossed out, gouged out with something like a bigger, a bigger knife. Uh, you figure that must be it. So you look down in the, in the moss right below and you pull up some of the moss and you find a stainless steel brooch, uh, and a heart and you open it up and you see this tiny little f piece of paper folded piece of paper. When you open it up, it just has the uh, apostrophe 23. And what might be blood stain? Surely it's red Kool-Aid or something on it. But the uh, 23, which it, it written to mean like 2023. Yeah. Um, what was the initials again? TL. The TL and the other one was crossed out? Yeah, you can't tell what they were. Okay. What did you find? Uh, so I'm just gonna show them this brooch. What is, um... And... Oh, good. Yeah, I'm just gonna show the brooch and pull out the tiny piece of paper, and I'm like, I'm trying really hard to read it, and I'm like, 23. That's what I got. Uh, it looks like I have... It might be... Uh, it's probably Kool-Aid. And so I put it back in there and I close the brooch. <laughs> put that so, in my pocket. <laughs> the blood shins a, sends a shiver down uh, your spine, Viv, um, when she says blood. So I want you... Uh, suddenly you feel afraid as well. Like you're up here. It's night. You're a little drunk. Um, the, the night... The night... The sh sh shooting. Everything that's happened already. The adrenaline has worn off. And you find yourself on a cliff... At night, big moon, with you know your friends, but a little bloody piece of paper. Uh, I need you to make like, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid might happen? Or are you afraid you might lose your nerve? Um, I'm afraid that that's Ace Rogers' blood, darlings. What if Ace Rogers crawled up here when we left from the coroner's table and wrote 23 to signify the year that we met? and put it in the brooch and buried it with his blood. 
I'm gonna grab Dolly's cup and take a long sip. <laughs> Dolly's gonna allow this to happen. <laughs> There's more Riv, in the in the track. Can, can you give me a night move? Uh, roll plus composure. Yeah, God, I got zero of that. Oh, that's a six. I hope I have zero composure. Oh, I got a one. I kind of want to fail on purpose, but uh, I'll take that seven. <laughs> um. Okay. You're gonna ma you're gonna manage your way through this, but not before <laughs> something else happens. You uh, you're you st you you step away because you're lost in thought about how maybe R R Ace could have came up here and dropped off, and maybe he crawled. And you're looking on the ground, and the flashlight kind of pans across the ground as um uh, Ethel has gotten up, is getting up, and you see what looks to be a face peeled off on the ground. Eyes, mouth, nose, uh, eyes, eye sockets empty because it's been peeled off, and you're frozen, and, um, and that just everything, just kind of everything leaves you at that moment. All, all thought, all everything, because you're just frozen in, in, in anticipation. You're on a cliff of terror, and then the light comes back, and you see, oh, it's just a handkerchief. One of you had dropped a uh, handkerchief. Oh, my and hanky. He, and a hanky, yeah. And Edith goes, oh, my hanky. And she gets out and, and grabs it. And you're like... Whoa. No, that was a face! Nosferatu! Nosferatu! I'm gonna hold it up. It's just the stains. Oh. And you'll see, like, the like the snot stains just look suspiciously like a human face. Oh. I like that. <laughs> when was the last time you cleaned that thing, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it looks like okay. I'm okay. <laughs> it looks okay. like a face. Like a human face. Like a ripped off face. Like a You think face you had maybe a little head. bit too much of Dolly's uh road soda? Absolutely not. As <laughs> meanwhile I'm like stumbling as I say that. <laughs> All right, we're going to get you guys back home, uh, retire for the evening. It's going to be the next day, bright and early. What do you guys, uh, I feel like we're going to want to meet up tomorrow morning, uh, maybe to figure out the plan. Let's meet up at the headquarters. Um, the Maven uh, headquarters are above the Candlelight Bookstore. Um, let's see. Dolly, what have you, uh, what what have you guys recently added to your little your little room above the Candlelight Bookstore to further make it the Murder Maven's place? Or what's been taken out? What's changed? Um, Dolly has added a record player, um, along with all of the records uh, of her favorite country music artists. Uh, we've got a little. Uh, well, Hank Williams up in there, a little Loretta Lynn, um, and it's sitting next to the whiteboard er, that we have that we use to connect all of our dots. Okay. Awesome. You guys now have a record player and records. You've met up. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Ethel, have you brought cinnamon rolls? Yeah. yeah. Yep, I did. There, yeah. there and, is. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I think that we should update my name to be Ethel because it's like lethal, lethal, Ooh, like lethal, lethal, yeah. lethal, <laughs> lethal. I keep, I keep trying and, to read it like that. Like I don't know why. I just ethel. That's okay. So just let's do that. Ethel. Ethel so, Edith. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> ethel, e lethal, ethel. Lethal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, the air is thick with the sweet smell of cinnamon rolls and frosting. Mm. There is a little Hank Williams playing in the background. Um, and you guys are uh, waiting. Uh, you just, just met up and uh, discussing what maybe your day plans are. How do you want to tackle this case? Um, did, did we want to talk to... Who are we talking to? We want to talk to that hussy Tell Maria me. Prescott, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And that Tony, Jason, and the news reporter, Martini. <laughs> Jason, Jason Martini. Martini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. All right. And well. oh yes, Amelia, Amelia for not laughing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fucking bitch. Um, how would you like to do this? Should we uh, split up in twos, cover more ground? I agree. Uh, agreed. Okay. What's the What's the plan then? I think there's four, right? There's Amelia, Tony, Maria, and Danny. Dan so... well, there's, well, Danny, yep. And then there's Dan, who's the property developer. D uh, Dan and Danny, or Danielle Walsh, uh, she's the reporter. Danny, right. Dan Gardner is the property developer. Those two were at the table with Ace prior to the final round. You didn't get a chance to really speak with them. And then, yeah, then there's Maria and Tony. And, um, you know, you can't really, we can't, oh, and Amelia, but we can't count Mike out either because Mike was there, the caterer. Yeah. Well, he winked course, at me, so I'll talk to him. And of course, Merle. Yeah. I mean, we get attacked to Ace, too. <laughs> just Ray's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> work. You got three questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is kind of a question. <laughs> Will you marry me? Um, oh. oh, right. From right. beyond the grave. <laughs> so if if we all actually, if we all split split up one and we can all talk to somebody and then come back and figure out who's left. Oh, yeah. I agree. Split up in twos or split up in four? Uh, one. Singles. Singles. I was thinking one oh. since there's so many. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that works. All right, who'd like to go first? Who's let's let's beep let's beep over to somewhere. Dolly, where's Beepus going? Beepus go is going. Beepus wants to go talk to Dan Gardner, the developer, the real estate okay. realtor guy, property guy. Yeah, right, right. Seems like a uh, a guy that Dolly could. How old is Dan? Dan, uh, he's a, a uh, late forties, early fifties. Okay. Bald and gentleman. Right, uh, okay. But uh, obviously uh, not too fit, but uh, successfully thick, if you know what I mean. Too thick to quit? <laughs> not with three C's, more like uh, the man The man gets fed well. You know what I mean? Oh, he's got okay. a cake. Maybe, maybe yeah, drinks a little too much, maybe. You know. Hey, I'm can I bring my strawberry wine? Well, I don't know if he drinks during the day, but maybe. Five o'clock somewhere. So, <laughs> so you pull up. It's <laughs> around ten in the morning. Holy oh. <laughs> well, I'll just it's bring coffee in then. The morning. Um, you pull up to his um his offices, uh, downtown Brendawood Bay. Uh, he works out of there. Uh, uh, Gardner and Associates uh, Property Development. Uh, you okay. go in. There's a young lady at the at the desk. So, I'm. Um, I, hello. I, do you have an appointment? Hi, baby. No. I listen, baby. I was at that uh, that poker tournament last night, and I'm just going around and I'm checking in on all those folks that were there. Did you hear about that shooting? Isn't that horrible? That was just awful. I know. I, I mean, know. Mr. Gardner is just broken up about this it was just oh you know, my goodness i you know he didn't even come in today and he then <gasps> suddenly you hear a you can go ahead and let her in you can go ahead annette oh and that freezes like <laughs> you can go ahead and see mr gardner now <laughs> she seems very embarrassed that she was <laughs> trying to protect her boss and her boss is like cock she, uh... on that. Like, okay <laughs> Dolly's gonna sort of like pat her on the the shoulder, be like, "There, there, honey, it's all right. You did your best." He's Knuff, all right. All right. Um. So go ahead. Uh, you go ahead. You go into his office. Big, kind of a little bit more ostentatious than you'd probably, you know, think for a property developer. He gets mm -hmm. a oh, partner. My, what a night last night was, wasn't it? Go ahead, have a seat here. Yeah. Uh, can I have a quick question? I would imagine like they know each other. Like they they have I'm sure ran into each other before. It's a small town. Sure, you're one of the murder mavens. Of course I know you. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I don't know if we've ever actually sat down and had a glass of strawberry wine, but we uh I'm sure I've seen you around town. You're you're famous. Practically famous. Practically famous. That's right, Dan. And she's going to sit down and she she did bring him coffee. She didn't bring wine, but she did bring coffee. <laughs> 
Besides the murder, did you get your money for your, uh, ch what charity was you going for? I was trying to help the therapy for the raccoons. Oh, right, okay. Appalachia, yeah, the Appalachia yeah, Raccoon good. Therapy Foundation. It, it does talk therapy with them. You know, I was, uh, I was going for the foundation for the improvement of Brindlewood County because you see here, Brindlewood hasn't changed much in hundreds of years and I think it's time we modernize. Don't you see? Don't you think? Well, damn. Have I'm a woman. Have you seen all those? He doesn't wait for you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen all those dilapidated all houses on prime coastal real estate? So what if they're homes of the town founders? We're supposed to treat the rundown shacks of a bunch of whalers for 150 years ago as sacred ground? Pfft, give Damn. me a break. These Damn. houses ought to be declared a safety hazard. Raise, I'm Dan, sorry, raise. Dan, yeah, yeah. I'm not here. To, I'm not here to talk about the gentrification of Brindlewood Bay, honey. I'm here to talk about the murder. <laughs> ah, well, first off, Dolly, I'd never gentrify anything. You know, I, I know we ain't talk much, but do I look like a gentrifier to you? She sort of looks at him for a, a long, pregnant pause. All right, go ahead. What, what were you? Would you come for? <laughs> what, Listen what? here, Dan. I. I gotta know a few things. I it's just been itching my little brain. Uh, I gotta ask you point blank, Dan. Did you kill that man? Let's roll a meddling. Okay. I got a seven. Seven. Okay, um, so this is going to be a complication. Okay. Tell you what, Dolly. I know I'm a suspect, as you are too. Mm -hmm. One suspect to another. I, I look at you, I don't see someone who could murder somebody. You look at my eyes, you think I could murder somebody? Listen, Dan. Growing up in Appalachia, I've done seen a lot of things, and so I don't always like to just trust what I see face value. I like to ask the hard questions, but if you didn't kill that man, I I just need to hear it from your mouth. Well, let me tell you, you know one person that I saw, that I looked mm -hmm. in their eyes and I thought, that person, that person could kill. Mm-hmm. And, and, and unexpected things. I've been around a long time, and this, uh, when I looked in that Amelia's eyes, I said, I cold, dark, like something's not there. You know what? She didn't laugh at my jokes. No, not a single, uh, uh, no, not a humorous bone in that body. I know. Sharp. I'm fine. Shiv sharp, if you know what I mean. I, and I'm hilarious. You, you do have a good humor about you. I've always I do. That. And that truck, that Thank you, Dan. wreck you drive around. Listen, that's a, you know, my husband bought me that truck. So the complication is this. You did not get a clue. You just got like a, you kind of got a lead. Let's put it that way. You got okay. like a quasi clue. It's not a whole clue. It's okay. just him saying, him throwing it at, at Amelia. At Amelia. I don't, I don't know. But, All right. You know what? This is, I'm so glad you came to uh, you know talk to me. I hope you're not you're not working this case, are you? Oh, I should. No, you know. no, no. Of course not, course. Dan. This is all just out of the goodness of my my heart. That's all. I'll tell you what, I gotta get on a call. But uh, you know what? You ever want to come by and share a glass of strawberry wine? You just you uh, don't hesitate. All right, Dan. You enjoy that coffee there, and then she's gonna pick up her own coffee and. Skedaddle. All right. All right. Um, 
Ethel. Lethal Ethel. Where are you going to talk? Who are you going to talk to? Uh, so I want to find out about this Tony Jason. Tony. Martins. Tony. Yeah. So you go to the school first, and yeah, he called in uh, today. Uh, so uh, you're going to have to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you know, we still have phone books. You look them up, and uh, you got his address. There's only one uh, Tony Jason Martini in town. And you find a nice, uh, just out in a little bit of suburb that there exists in Brindlewood Bay. Uh, he's in a cute little one-story bungalow home and a nice little well-made yard. You walk up and maybe knock a little bit on the thing. Are you, are you going to look in the window? How are you going to? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I do, before I knock on the door, I do want to, like, make a little walk around as far as I can. I don't know if I want to go into the backyard or not. That's a little weird, but I would if I could, but uh, I want to, like, look in any windows I can see in. I do have a plate of cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, like, munching on as I'm, like, I brought them for him, but I'm munching on them as I'm, like, trying to look in the window and stuff. Alright, give me a uh, meddling roll, please, as you look in the, in the window. Yeah. Eleven? Is that, and then that's, um, is that plus one? Uh, so... I have a plus one in composure and reason, and only those. So, that's without the plus one. I know, but you got a plus one, though. Oh. Right? Okay. Because you're using composure or, re or reason, one of those two. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, you go to look in the, um, in his window, and, um, for a split second, you know, you, it's just what you expect. You're looking into his living room and then um, a kitchen table. But then suddenly there's faces in the mirror. Uh, not in the mirror, but in your reflection in the window. Um, as if uh, they're, they're right there in front of you, as if they're, they're coming from you. Two different faces, a man and a woman's. And they're so close, though, that they're almost as if they're attached to the same neck or something. And you're like horrified, and as right when you're about to look away to see who's behind you, to see if these faces are behind you, they start smearing across the window as if like being dragged like, together, slowly, like like they're two suckers on a tentacle. And you look away, and you look, and uh, there's nothing behind you. And look back, and uh, the window's clear, and you don't see the faces anymore. I need okay. you to make the day move because you this has got you really worked up and kind of scared. Um, name what you're afraid will happen if you fail this or lose your nerve right now. Uh, so I am I'm afraid that he that uh, Jason would come out and see me here and that I would lose my cookies. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, you're not so afraid I'll you're put, about yeah. to lose your cookies and he's going to yeah. see you staring in his window while you're yeah. vomiting. Okay, yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll, we'll roll plus composure. Okay, six, and that's that's with the plus one. That's with the plus one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm losing my cookies. You lose your cookies. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> All I, okay, so the door opens and Tony comes out just as you're done and you look up and you've got this tray of cookies that you've brought over. Was it cookies? It was cookies, wasn't it? It was. It was cookies, yeah. With, with vomit on it and a little on your lips. And he's like, Miss, what's Ethel's last name? Ethel's? Oh, shoot. Uh, Berkeley. Yeah. Ber Berkeley. Miss Berkeley? And we're, this is where we're going to take our break. We're okay. going to take a 10 minute <laughs> break and uh, we'll be back with more Murder She Streamed uh, after the break. Okay. <laughs> we lost some cookies. I'm in need of a good tentacle twist and a hot swash. Hmm. Oh, maybe some ketchup chips. Huh. Meat. Huh. 
Dearest Pen, I had another great Vivala Dungeon the other night. Next week is going to be Vivala Dungeon Master. Kevin, you know, from level 9, will be doing it again. I asked Lich and I told him I should be doing that show too. I do not think he realizes my value. He said he would keep an eye on the situation. I hate him sometimes. I hear he isn't going to be doing X-Crawl anymore, which means I won't be doing X-Crawl. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I hope you are well. Yours truly, Sai. Uh, he's an Oompa Loompa. He escaped from Willy Wonka's factory and went to live as a munchkin. Mm. <coughs> 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 okay. Persuasion and too weary. Libiesta lima leoficum. Neoesis, Gelium, and Tester, Brunadio Veririum. Yes, yes, I've summoned the Gelanius Cubes, the Mystic Knives, and the Phylacteries. Shivered at Cereal, now with Marshmallows. They are truly delicious. You'll never get my Marshmallows. Fist Grandma. Oh, wow, looking terrible. I thought you were gonna say more modern vagina, and I was wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I had a more too. modern vagina. Better, more. No, that actually sounds terrible. I'm not. No, more, no, more, 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 aer more, more aerodynamic. Better, <laughs> more, more spacious, faster, more, more spikes. One of those robotic modern, ones. modern more spikes vagina. in it. I want Wait. a six million dollar vagina.
Hey everybody, it's the Liching Hour on Sunday. I'm the Lich and this is Murder <laughs> difference because sooner or later will all of us be on the menu all of us i'm really <gasps> you're muted <gasps> muted lich what? and we are back <laughs> with more um cozy afternoon murder solving we're rejoining the murder mavens uh <clears throat> dolly ethel edith and vivian on the second, the day after a murder happened at the poker event they had all been attending, Ace Rogers had been shot twice. Well, once in the chest and one, as we found out, in the thigh. Ethel, the ladies had all um, separated today to go off to talk to various uh, suspects, interview them to find out more. Ethel had just gone over to Tony slash Jason Martinez is uh, Martini's place, and. Uh, Peeking in the window had seen a startling and frankly very disturbing uh, hallucination in the window that caused her to lose her cookies uh, figuratively and metaphorically onto a plate of cookies that she had brought over for Mr. Tony, Mr. Martini. He, at that point, had just walked out the door to see her with um, her plate of cookies dripping in the, in the stuff, in the vomit. Wait, what? I was asking. All. <laughs> um, Miss <clears throat> uh, Berkeley. Miss Berkeley, are, are you okay? Um, <laughs> I'm shaking, and like the plate of cookies is like shaking in my hands, and I'm just looking at him, and looking back at the window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you? Were you? Why don't you come in? Why don't you come in here? Let me give me the. <laughs> thank, thank you. Come on, right in. Just come right in. Yeah. He like turns it over in the flower. Bed yeah, next yeah, to yeah, her. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna set this down here on the porch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll and come I'm in just, you need a I'm just staring at the like... window as as we're going. I just keep staring at the window. <laughs> <laughs> like. Well, uh, come right in. I don't, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I don't know why you're in my flower bed, but I'm I'm very happy for you to come. Uh, it was such a terrible, terrible thing last night. You must be as shook, shooken up as I am. And he leads I, you I in, am. yeah, sets you down on the Davenport. And would you like some water? 
Um, uh, y y yes, and and I washcloths or something to wipe wipe this way. Like I can feel oh. it on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So he uh, he leaves for a moment to go get you. Hear yeah. him getting a water and a thing, and you look around his apartment. It's very um, sparse, uh, very simple uh, coffee table, um, no TV. Oddly enough, uh, in this living area room, uh, feel you get this feeling like this is a not very used is not used very often. You can tell right away that he's single, um, uh, mostly because of the way everything's decorated and it's very in the sparseness of it. it doesn't have doesn't have that touch to it. Um, and uh, then that's connected to a little dining room. He had gone off to the kitchen over here. Um, and the dining room table, you see a laptop computer open. Is there anything you'd like okay. to do before he gets back? Yeah, I would like to pull out my little notebook and then am I able to see what's on the laptop or has it got a lock screen on it? Um, uh, yeah, you see, I, I, you know, I'll just tell you right now, you see what look, appears to be a gambling site. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to write that in my little note. Like, okay, he likes to gamble outside of... You know, his gambling yeah. tournaments. Right. Like, avid. Avid gambler. Um, there's, uh, the laptop has a, uh, there's a laptop, and you notice that there, just as he comes back in, you notice that there's, um, paper and stuff. Like, it's a, like a work area. Like, he's, you got. Okay. But that stuff, you can't tell what it is. You can just see pencils, paper, that kind of stuff. And then, yeah. Uh, and a journal. It looks like a journal of some sort. A little booklet. Mm -hmm. And then that computer. So, either he's, you know, working from home, you know, on some school stuff and then also gambling or whatever. So you're, you're not quite yeah, sure. But he, okay. suddenly he's back with a glass of water and, uh, yeah. and a handkerchief for you to wipe yourself okay. with. Yes, yes. So as I'm uh, wiping my face, I mentioned the gambling site on the computer. Oh, oh no. <laughs> he, he closes the computer, goes over and closes the computer. Yeah, I just, uh, I like keeping my skills uh, sharp. Um, right. Yeah, sharpening the saw, if you will. Yeah, no, that that makes total sense. That's why you were there last night. That yeah. uh, checks out. And so he, I'm writing in my little notebook right in front of him. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, you're well. Yeah. You're a suspect just as I am. Um, you're yeah. Not, you are part of that murder mavens right that uh, oh heard. yeah absolutely i am and i do have a podcast that i uh came to interview you so that you could be on the podcast you as should, a guest you should hear <laughs> how some of the kids talk about you guys in in the school they talk about you're the second coming of sherlock holmes and uh there's there's actually a little uh i don't know if you know this but a little murder mavens group in the high school uh oh the AV kids, <laughs> yeah a few boys and a few girls, and uh, they, uh, I, I think they'd be terribly nervous to ever meet you or talk to you, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna write that down to go meet them. <laughs> <laughs> so that I've written that down. Okay, so yes, I am a suspect too, but I kind of just wanted to see what uh, your viewpoint was on last night, and I'm still like looking at my little notebook. Uh, so I'm just interested in that for the podcast, of course. Honestly, I, I think I would have won it if the tragedy hadn't happened. I wasn't, I'm going to be frankly honest with you, I, uh, like some of us, I wasn't very happy that they had invited Mr. Rogers. Uh, you know, that was a lot of pressure um, in order to uh, do it, and, but you know, I'm not a murderer. I might be a little hyper competitive, um, want to win, but sh surely, surely I do not. These, I wouldn't even know how to work a gun if you gave it to me. Right. Yeah, me neither. I totally understand that. So I do have here in my notes, just as I was sitting there, I overheard several rumors that maybe you're counting cards. Like, how do you feel about that? I was so worried that would come up again. It's just ridiculous. They didn't, uh, someone did not like me winning last year. And I'm a math teacher, so it was pretty easy to start um, uh, accusing me of counting cards. Uh, thankfully, the person who started that I thought started spreading that rumor is it wasn't here this year, so that's that's good. Yeah, but. unfortunately, that rumor is still around, as I do have it here in my notes, and I show up a little notebook, and then I oh. go back to writing again. <laughs> 
Well, we're not trying to solve the case of the card car counting, are we? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I like that. I'm gonna write that down. It's gonna, no, it's gonna be on the podcast. Okay, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Perfect. I love that. And um, Mini -me what? Dance. What charity? Okay. That's cute. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, what charity were you there for again? I totally have spaced <clears throat> it. I'm losing my mind a little bit. Oh. Oh. I. I was there uh, raising money for the Fresh Start Foundation. Um, it's a group that helps ex-convicts get job skills. And, and I don't know if you know that, but did you try the uh, muffins? Did you get a chance to try the cupcakes? Oh, absolutely I did. Oh, uh, Mike is one of the uh, one, one of those persons that I was able to that well, not me directly, but the Fresh Start Foundation was able to help. Um, I, I would don't want to say anything. I mean, certainly don't put it in your book, but uh, I was just so glad to see my the money I put into that foundation actually helping. You know, I don't know which charity you were raising money for, but that feeling of being able to give and seeing the direct result of that, um, having them cater your events is, is pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, so... Do you gamble often to raise money for this charity? Uh, I, um, <clears throat> no, I, uh, you know, I just, um, you want to, uh, roll, uh, yeah. roll a meddling for me. Okay. I got a 10. 10 plus what? You yeah, let's do reason. Yeah. Plus one? Yeah, plus okay. one. All right. Um, okay. You're just gonna straight up get a clip. Wait, hold on. All right, you um, you right away you're he's lying, and you, yeah, and you're like, you're pretty sure he might have a a problem, a gambling yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet. Is there any kind way any way you can get him out of this room so you can snoop around on that desk on that table? Yeah, so I'm going to uh, rinse my mouth and spit it back into the cup that he gave me. Could I actually get a refill on this? Ed, here's your here's your handkerchief back. Oh, it's, yeah. Sorry, he's got a little puke on it. You probably want to uh, go wash that thoroughly right now, or it's going to stain, and then it's just going to smell really bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He, you yeah. see, he's a little bit of relief. Like he hasn't had um, a woman in his life for quite a while, so he takes that very like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. So you, yeah. he goes into the kitchen. And you hear him like, Shh, cold water, not 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 warm water. It's gotta be cold water, or the warm <laughs> water will send it. <laughs> like, oh, okay, all right, thank you. Other... Yeah, that that'll take. Thanks, me. Ethel. <laughs> uh, so you go over to the table. Yeah. And you look at that. You look at the paperwork, and it's definitely not schoolwork. And you open up the little, just really quick, thumb through his little notebook, mm -hmm. and it's a ledger. And it seems like he is in the in, in the in the red. He owes quite a bit of money due to his gambling. Okay. Does it specify to who this he owes a lot of money to? Um, give me a, okay, let's, let's make this a day move and tell me like, you're going to push it because you're trying to find something specific. What are you worried about hap what to happen if you get, if you that fail he comes to back, that he comes back in and sees me shuffling through this and then he, you know, is upset. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I got a nine. Okay, and then you, and then it's plus, let's do, like, composure. Composure. Or yeah. reason, actually, because whichever one. They're both one. Okay, They're both there you go. Just one. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um. Uh, you, uh, see a name that was not at the, uh, that rings a bell for some reason. Um, it's, um, D. Castielli. Castiel? Castielli? C-A-S-T-I-L-L-E. Castelli? D. Castelli. Now, you don't know that rings a bell. Okay. But you might have to ask around a little bit. 
um, to find out. Oh. <laughs> Dang, Kugabit. D. Cast <laughs> D Castilli. Yeah. You think that uh, maybe Edith might know who that is. Okay. So you'll put uh, that away. Just as you close the book and head back and sit down, uh, he, Jason comes back in with another yeah. fresh glass of water. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yes, thanks. You're going to excuse yourself and go there, or did you have any more questions for him? Nope. I'm going... I've got pretty good... I got some pretty good stuff here, so I'm okay. going to take a sip of water. Thank, thank him. Uh, sorry that I puked on your cookies. Well, what else? Sorry that I lost my cookies on my cookies in your flowers. I can see it. You're you're in the thing. You don't want to puke on my flowers. You step off and you just puke in the plate and I'm really sorry that that happened. It was a rough yeah. night for all of us. Are you going to be okay? I think I will be just fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. You excuse yourself and say goodbye and then we're going to mm -hmm. cut to uh, Edith. Edith, who are you going to go talk to? Uh, I wanted to go talk to Danny Walsh, the reporter. Yes. The um, the Brindlewood uh, Beacon uh, isn't the hustling, bustling newsroom you would expect to see from the TV shows and the movies. It's actually kind of a dour place, um, still locked in a... It's too many cubicles and too small of a place. Um, cubicle walls are a little too high. Um, you'd expect this to have been an accounting firm instead of like a, a you know, a newspaper. Um, the, the way these guys are, you, you tell them at reception that you're looking for Danny and they immediately give her a call because they don't, they're going to talk to everybody. And within many minutes, you're in the lobby of the Brindlewood Beacon, um, speaking with, uh, Danielle. She's got sharp eyes. She's charming. But you can tell she's a she's got an eye for detail. Um, she's she came with a book already, like a little notebook already. Mm -hmm. He said, "Hello, you're Edith." Do it, Edith. Yes. Do it, do it. Right, right, right. Do it. I'm pulling out my own notebook. Oh, dueling notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, little uh, newspaper humor there. Um, so uh, what can I do for you, uh, Edith? Well, you seem... Is she, like, she's younger, right? Or is she older? Um, she is younger than you. Um, I'd say early 30s. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, then you, Edith, the... not you, Mar Myriad. Yeah. <laughs> I am early 30s. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say, you seem like quite the up-and-coming journalist. Uh... And you were there last night when the murder took place. I wanted to know if what your thoughts were on it, if you had any sneaking suspicions or anything. Well, you know what? Since one suspect to another, let, let's let's put our cards out on the table, as it were, if you don't mind the pun. Do you have any idea where what the Society of the Kindly Ones actually does? I mean, how were they able to Nothing. entice... I'm sorry? I was going to say, I just thought that they put on this, you know, poker tournament every right. year. They did right. things for the community. That's the only thing they seem to do. They pop their head up once a year to do this. And how are they able to entice a big name Vegas player to play in Brindlewood Bay? None of this adds up. And now he, that high roller is dead? I mean, there is a good story here. We just got to got to put the pieces together somehow. What's your take? Well, did you murder him? Uh, no, I'm not really in the murdering business. I'm more in the murder solving business. Right. Um, <gasps> murder mavens, right? Yes, that is. That yes. is. Mm. Edie looks a little like. <laughs> like she toughs up a little bit, like, you know, like a peacock, just like. Mm. Um, you know, I did hear something strange, something running around the rumor mill that you might actually be able to confirm. Something about uh, some sort of trouble between Ace and Maria Prescott that was also there last night? Ace and Maria Prescott. Oh, that she's that Maria. Old, old family money here in Brindlewood. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite... You know, that's interesting. Let's roll, um, 
Let's see if Danielle does know anything about this. Let's roll a, um, uh, a, a meddling. Okay. Nine, and then can I add anything to that? Uh, yeah, whatever reason or composure, whichever makes yeah, sense let's for you. Yeah, do, let's do reason. That, that'll put us at 11. Okay, all right. Um, okay. This is not, this is off the record because I can't even report on it, but, um. I will put my notebook away to show that it's off the record. <laughs> <laughs> I have sources that have told me that, um, this is why I'm trying to put the, all these pieces, like why they invite Rogers, specifically Rogers, because I had heard that a, um, a famous poker, or, or not famous, but a, uh, a well-known or I didn't have the name, but a well-known poker player had come at the bequest of the Prescott family to um, to a private um, event, like to teach them um, uh, poker, and ended up fleecing them for quite a bit of dough. Now, I can't say for sure it was Rogers, but we all think thought it was. The sources think it was. And so to have this group bring him back is just like a big to Maria. No, I don't. I wasn't quite sure what's going on there. Unless it was Maria that had requested that he be there. Interesting. Interesting. Notebooks back out. Very Notebooks good. back out. <laughs> um, you murder mavens meet up a lot. Maybe I could come by and talk to you guys sometime. Oh, are you interested in interning? <laughs> Inter? No, oh, you are adorable. No, no, I, no. If I just thought, in the interest of all of us being suspects, maybe we could pool together what we have. I'm gonna. I think that would be amiable for all of us hmm. pool our resources hmm. god knows Sheriff Hopper doesn't know what he's doing girl <laughs> don't we know it I mean he's adorable he's he, try, he tries he's he's it, frankly it, enough yeah he's 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 doing his best you know you can never really expect a man to do too much Well, he's keeping busy, me. and that's what's that's what's sweet. He's keeping him, himself busy. Him's busy. Be for me, darling. <laughs> you just you need to just put your best foot forward and, and take charge sometimes. Well, absolutely, that's what we do best. Is there anything else I can help you with? I'd like, I'll if I learn anything new, I will come share. And if I hope that if you learn anything new, maybe you come share it too. You have a card. Here you go. Here's my number. Thank you. I will insert it into my notebook as a uh, as a little bookmark. Okay. Uh, and is there anything else you want to talk to her about, or ask her? Uh, no, I think I think I, I got everything I wanted. So. Okay. All right. We're gonna cut then to Viv. Viv walking up a uh, to a gate, a big ostentatious black gate with flowers and whales carved are like Ugh. in it. Like and you're you're opening, and then there's the cobblestone little thing that leads up to a, a larger house than obviously this woman probably needs. I don't, you don't think she has a husband anymore either, um, and you, as far as you know, it's just her. She probably has a, a butler. Oh, yep, yep, a butler answers the door. Um, <laughs> tall, uh, looks like this guy's about to die at any time. Just liver spotted to hell, like old. Um, Big hook nose that hangs over his uh, mouth and yes. oh, oh goodness! I've actually I've uh, called Beverly to help me with this. I'm gonna use my move. Oh, Bev's coming too. Yeah. Awesome. So I think okay, because uh, of what, yeah, because of the rumor, I think I want her to. Uh, I, I sneakily want to like pull one over Merle and be like, "Come find out what we can about Maria." Um. What, uh, since you're pulling that move and you've driven over here with Bev, and Merle is a suspect too, what, let's, let's play out a little conversation with you and Bev. Like, okay. what's, what's going on there? 
Um, Beth, I have uh, recruited you as a deputy maven today. Uh, we don't have any sister time anymore with Merle always getting in the way between us. So I thought maybe we could go for a little drive. Oh, would you look at that? We are right outside Maria Prescott's estate. We should go pay her a visit. Now, now Bev has always been a little um, kind of st- aloof when it comes to you and the murder maven things. She could, you know, deep down she thinks it's a little silly, but whatever keeps you busy kind of thing. But today, mm-hmm. because Merle is a suspect and the other <laughs> way this shit's gone down, that she's a little more like playing along. And so yeah. she's she's happy to come because she's she keeps saying, I can't believe anybody would think my Merle would do something like shoot a man. <laughs> Like no. not your Merle. No, not <laughs> your my Merle's Merle. a saint. No. Yes, he's. I mean, he's not the smartest man, but he's a good man. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, we can't all have winners, can we? Mine's missing. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, so here we are, the butler, and uh, Bev goes, oh, we're here to see Miss uh, Ms. Prescott. Mrs. Mrs. Prescott, please. Uh, no, it should be Ms. Ms. Prescott. She never did marry. She never did marry. That's what Bev goes, Maria. She never did marry. Mrs. We're here to see Maria, darling. Miss, Miss, yes, we're here to see Maria. Yes, oh, one moment. And he goes away and forever. And suddenly he's back and the door is opening. In the parlor, please. You guys go in. It just, the the smell hits you right away. It's like antique shop mixed with perfume and maybe a little dead in there somewhere. Um, It hits you hard. It's like a wall of of it. You're like, ooh, this is, yeah. Big Ugh. stairway with the carved wood and a, a whale jumping off. There's um, uh, lots of uh, uh, paintings of ships and and um, and uh, and sailor kind of things going on. It leads you into the parlor, which is even more grossly decorated with that kind of shit. Like there's a uh, um, uh, whaling the harpoons. Like there's a pair above the above the furnace or furnace the fireplace. Maria's there in her in all of her glory in some kind of like it's like a rich person's it could could be a rich person's bedtime thing but looks good enough to where she's just casual around the house you can't tell if she's ready for bed or if she's like entertaining guests it's one or the other <laughs> um and she's lording over uh, in this larger chair and there's a little there's little couches next to her and she goes hmm this is an interesting uh, interesting visit. Uh, please sit down. Oh yes, so just a bunch of murder suspects, I suppose. Um, I, I'd like try to find a seat. I like move like a like a like a tuffled like a tuft pillow out of the way and just like squeeze and pull she, Bev down next she, to me. She pulls up the most disgusted face when you say that. I like that the, the whole thing is very distasteful. The idea that she would be involved with murder or a murder suspect, no less. Of course, that's not true, though. <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Mm. She catches uh, Bev. Bev is looking above her at the um, at the harpoons, and um, and Bev's like, "I swear, those harpoons are those real? Are those? Is that dry? Is that old? Are they stained? Or is that?" And um, Maria looks at. Uh, looks up and goes oh yes those are real those are real about a hundred years old or more you know in the summer of 1877 the crew of the whaler Deep Reaver set out for yes that's lovely that's that's a delightful story um I, if you don't mind, I have a couple questions they for you. returned with the strangest no, whale that's all anyone right. had it's, ever seen we've all read Moby Dick it's <laughs> it quite alright it had tentacle all right. leg legs that's great. I love that for eyes. you. Anyways, so Merle. Mer- <laughs> Merle. You right. know Merle. The mayor. My brother-in-law. My sister. My this dear, is... angelic, perfect sister's Bev husband. Goes, Bev goes, Viv, Viv, please. Cause, uh, it's all right, darling. Maria's staring at you. Bev, please. Viv, Viv, 
please, please, just let, please, no, go it's, on, it's Maria. it's quite all right. Go, go on, Maria. Uh, <clears throat> about, about, about the boat? The harpoons? No. No, this they is... returned with the strangest whale anyone had ever seen. It had That's lovely. tentacle-like legs and rows sure. of oily black eyes. They sold right. its parts all over the world. And the, did you know the proceeds from that were used to turn Brindlewood Bay into what it is today? I had no idea. That's fascinating. I, I can't wait for you to regale us with another whaling story. Um, in the meantime... No, that's not an invitation. I'm actually quite... I'm, I'm a little... I'm on the clock, really. I mean, they'll just take my wages at that point. And we all know that... You're I, here I assume... to bore me, I'm sure. Of Go course. On. Of what, course. What would you like to talk about? Well, Meredith, I would love to talk about... Uh, did you kill Mr. Rogers? How dare you come into my home and accuse me? Bev goes, she's, she's just asking... We were, we're from one suspects to the other of, I have already spoken to the police. We are the police. Did you, you did you? <laughs> I've been deputized. And all so right. is Bev through all me. Right. We're going to do a day move. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think uh, the biggest, your biggest worry is being kicked out before you get to ask her any more questions. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually get, because Bev's there, I get advantage on every role with oh, yeah. Bev but it comes at a Perfect. cost every time. Yeah. <laughs> That's a five, friend. Uh, five plus. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah. We'll make it a. We'll make it a fail. Fail. Uh, yeah, it's a six. So she's uh, good old honest try. She's very uh, upset that you would ask her straight up if she was a murderer. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, rings the bell next to her and says, "You need to leave." Oh, goodness. And then suddenly um, the big tall dude's right next to you, madame. <laughs> offers your hand for you to leave. I, like, shake it away for a second. Melissa, um, I <laughs> am so terribly sorry. I would love... Would you mind? What a lovely chandelier. And I look at, like, this dolphin in bossed like chandelier what is the history of this piece as you know i am quite the fan of antiques and you have such classy taste oh you have a new condition uh for yeah. filling that role your condition is um uh we can think of a good nice word for you uh the the ruling like the money in the town isn't looking you're kind of embarrassed like oh god your social standing with that level of people. You're you're more kook. You're kook. You're kook. I'm like we already I'm blacklisted. You like blacklisted. <laughs> kook listed. I'm officially blacklisted. Yeah, yes, you're officially blacklisted from any kind of yeah, anything to do with the uh ruling class of Britain. Oh America. no. Yeah. Oh no. Is that a condition that can be cleared with the cozy activity? Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out how to do that for sure. But I already have an idea, okay. don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um so as i like kind of like get up i'm trying to do this half-assed apology to maybe i, I think i kind of want to see if there's anything on my way out that i can like snoop and see if i can find any clues um let's meddling then okay meddling oh wait hold on not that one i had to do advantage what am i doing Oh, you can do roll twice. Oh, um, yeah, you could be. Oh, I don't know. Six, one. Oh, I rolled a, I rolled a four and a three, so it doesn't really matter. Um. <laughs> four and a three and a what? So it'd be a one other roll with the advantage. Should have rolled three d six. Oh, three d. Yeah. Oh, it did four. Oh, it's a six. Sorry, a four, a four, and a three. <laughs> yeah. So you got an eight, and then plus what for? What's a good ability you have? Oh shit, I forgot it was 2d6. Okay, so eight plus um, meddling. It's, maybe... It could be composure or reason or. Yeah, I have a one in all of those. Oh, okay. So you got a nine. Yeah. All right. What can we give you clue wise? Okay. Um, all 
Okay, you um you as you're passing by um huh. a table uh like even though this is a posh place um she's she seems to be a little bit of a hoarder in some in like in um in like books not so like magazines magazines and papers documents and, and pictures and stuff seem to be stacked everywhere and then one as you're mm-hmm. kind of going by you just kind of idly move something. Because you see, like, a picture of Maria, and um, it's a it's a group shot of people of other older people, and then mm-hmm. um, Ace Rogers is in the middle, giving a big thumbs up. Oh, does it look like a family photo? But then the whole thing falls. Oh no! Like it all slides, and okay. uh, and uh, you feel like the lurch kind of like. He looks he's a lot stronger than he appeared. Like he's not as old. All of a sudden he's got both hands around you and you're being kind of forcibly taken out the door. Um, <laughs> I look I look over at Bev who's like walking innocently next to me I'm like that went well. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um and what complicated things is your sister is terribly embarrassed and she's effusively trying to apologize to everybody. You're let out. So um the yeah, things are like with for Merle and the mayor, and this is money that comes in to help him stay in office. Yeah, she's gonna stay behind to try to fix this this situation. <laughs> Later on, she's Excellent. gonna ask you. She was gonna ask you. Please tell me what you're gonna ask people next time. <laughs> she's oh, kicking herself well then, for not having asked you what the hell you were gonna ask this Maria, because you gotta talk to old money no, a little differently. There's no element of surprise if I don't. Just point. go for it. You know, it's it's Hollywood gumption, dear. You'll you'll know. You just when the opportunity arises, you take it. <laughs> um, okay, we've uh each one of you has met with somebody. There are there is um two well, if you wanna talk well, there's three people left. If you wanted to, there's Amelia, there is Mike Mike Taylor, the sh- the caterer, and then there's yeah. um Merle. But do you so, all, are you all going to meet back? Yeah, you have an idea? Uh, yeah, because um, the Tony brought up that mic because he was the guy with the muffins and the fresh up. Mm-hmm. I think that I will be interested in going there, but I would definitely like meet up with these guys first. Okay. If we want to do that. Do you guys want to meet? Mm-hmm. We All right, so you went off to meet up with him and then around, you're getting back around lunchtime to the Maven headquarters or maybe you go to the Bean? Um, yeah. To reconnect so we're gonna okay we're gonna have you at a coffee getting coffee and scones at the bean um telling each other what you had found out Mm -hmm. cool go ahead so (laughs) so this uh tony the the math teacher found out he's got a huge gambling problem um, and he's lying about it. And uh, I, I may have sneaked through several of his things and his laptop. And uh, he actually owes a lot of money to a D Castiel. Edith, I'm uh, wondering if he, if that brings up any like the moment you recognition. S- the moment you say the name out loud and you ask Edith, you realize why you na- know that name. Um, it was when it was in one of your like it was like you just needed to say it out loud to somebody and it like you're like oh shoot mm. it was a name in one of your podcasts because it's like a well known mobster in Boston well known oh, supposed I literally have that gangster written down uh, when you're yeah. like oh you might want to ask Edith about it I was literally like. So, okay, so then, I'm sorry. So she goes, yeah, and then cool. you, you remember Ethel right when Edith goes, yeah, he's a gangster and uh, supposed yeah, gangster okay. in Boston. Okay, yeah. Um, and he also talked about the caterer, Mike. Uh, he was doing the charity fresh up. He was there for the charity fresh up, and the caterers there were a part of that. And so I'm thinking that maybe I want to go check out that Mike because. He was there too. So he implied but, that Mike uh, was a criminal who had gotten a second chance. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna lean into Ethel and be like, "Don't, don't mention the gluten-free cupcakes." Oh right. Yeah. So Dolly yeah. was on a tangent. Jeez. Yeah. 
Yeah, she probably has She's already loaded up off. with a ton of gluten since then. I don't, yeah, we don't need more gluten loading here. <laughs> <laughs> gluten loading. <laughs> yeah, like carb loading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I hear them whispering about gluten? <laughs> I don't know, do you? <laughs> yeah. Dolly doesn't say anything except for she just like stares off into the distance. Oh, like a thousand yard stare? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> she just really hates hates gluten free things. She only gluten's good. It's good for you. Oh, and I lost my cookies. Literally. Oh. Yeah. Instead of some... figuratively? Both. And I, I happened to see something really strange in the mirror. I don't know what was going on. Maybe I'm just losing it. But uh, in my old age, I saw like faces that looked kind of like tentacles. It was horrifying. The people at the beach! Dolly screams what? out. Dolly <laughs> screams the people at the beach. What? What, what people the, at the beach? The, the white Some, yeah. Mm hmm. Were they Anyways, tentacles? Anyways, what, what, what did you guys find? And I just, I'm like staring off a little bit. Like, anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Dolly kind of straightens herself and she says, Well, I went and talked to that Dan fella. And man, he does not listen at all. But he did suggest I go talk to Amelia, who did not laugh at my jokes. We know. You are very upset about it. Yeah, wouldn't you be? Yes, I would. You are hilarious. You I know! Join a comedy troupe, darling. I really should. Hmm. Is, is, okay. is that all that, that <laughs> what, what's Dan provided? Oh, yeah. Just Amelia? Oh. Yeah, we just go talk to Amelia. That Dan fella, I don't think he did it. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. It, he's a little too focused on real estate development and gentrifying Brindlewood Bay than it, oh, he is boy. doing anything else. He's the absolute worst, but I don't think he's a murderer. I mean, he don't oh, look right. like he knows how to handle a firearm, honey. His hands are too soft for a man who works in construction. Well, you know, they, once they reach a certain point, they just boss everyone else around. Uh-huh. The exploitation well, I, I talked... class, we call it. <laughs> well, I, I talked to uh, Maria... Uh, Beth came with me. That was nice. We had some sister bonding time. I think it went really well. You know, really got very close. Um, <laughs> um, she loves whales and um, harpoons. Uh -huh. And um, I did see a photo on the way out with my beloved Mr. Rogers. <gasps> in the photo he looked quite dashing and she was in it and a bunch of other old money i couldn't quite figure out who was who but they were both in it so they know each other enough for her to have a framed photo of him in her foyer interesting that because when i spoke to danny he said that rumor has it that Aaron Rogers had been invited, Ace Rogers had been invited uh, to the Prescott family to help them with, you know, learning how to play poker, and he ended up fleecing all of them. Ah. For a great sum of money. My Ace? A thief? Opportunist, probably. Oh, of course, yeah, that makes so much more sense, yes. Um... Well, that's suspicious. I'll write that down. <laughs> I think that's um one, two, three, four, five clues so far. I think I think it's more than that, actually. I think you guys got quite a few clues, yeah. Ooh, I'd love to know where I missed. I have the um oh, the bullet on the thigh. I have the uh gun in the toilet. Yep. I have uh Tony's gambling problem. Yep. Um the photo of Ace. And the uh, well-known gambler that we think is Ace that uh, taught the Prescott family. What else yep. is there? Um, also, uh, the connections with Boston organized crime. Yeah. It owes a lot of money. One of the suspects owes a lot of money. Yeah. Um, yep. And then 
There is one more that you haven't solidified yet. Which which was, was um what uh, Dan told Dolly that <sighs> he looked in the eyes of of Amelia and he saw the eyes of a killer. Now that was necessarily a clue, but that was the the complication. Like a, he wanted to go talk to Amelia. So no. you guys have enough where yeah, you have six now? So you have enough, like you've more than enough to start taking the theorize uh move now if you wanted to. It's up to you. At any point going forward you can have Merle talking to Hopper and Maria about Ace, uh, uh, ho- talking to Hopper about Maria and Ace's past. Would that count as a clue as well? That was in connection. He was Merle was saying um, this. The, he was trying to protect Maria by saying this whole situation that happened with Roger and and, and Maria. Mm. Let's not bring it up for um, news purposes. Really, is what he was trying to get at. He didn't want to have Maria embarrassed by. Um, getting out that that had happened because of the connection between the two in this case. You know what I'm saying? So that's what yeah. you, you're kind of putting that together now. Now that you know about the Rogers, the Ace and Maria connection. Hmm. You know, it is rather suspicious that Merle is so intent on not getting out that there's a connection between Maria and Ace. I wonder if the Prescotts give a lot of funding towards the mayor and his campaign. Uh, I mean, if you, Dolly, if you want to confront Amelia about your joke, she is interested in that Newt charity, and that seems like that's doing very well locally, which might connect to Maria somehow, who is also local money. Uh, uh, maybe we can... I, th- I think so. I think that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna investigate that Amelia woman. I... Uh, shotgun. <laughs> I just invite myself. I'm out the door going into Beepus right now. <laughs> I love this. I definitely <laughs> want to go check out that Mike guy because he was, he is a criminal, like, you know, leaves there, so he might have ties somehow or knowing go, how to get a gun, how to, you know, deal with it. All I'll that, go with so. Ethel. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so uh, Dolly and Viv are head out to the... um, Like, you didn't even know this place existed until today, but there's this little... um, It's set off in the woods. Uh, It seems like a relatively new little building. The... Uh, that it, and, it, and honestly, it had been built in the last couple of years. Um, the Brindlewood Fen Newt Sanctuary. Um, there's signs put up saying soon to be open to the public as a as a thing for children to come check out newts. Uh, not just yet. See this other poster though. Um, next to the door, it says "Newts are a hoot" in the little newts on it. And um, and you go in and there's a it's a nice little open office and there's like desks and stuff but there's like one person there and that's Amelia and she's sitting oh oh hello hello she runs over hello hello you were you were there last night too what a horrifying horrifying time she, she speaks this way too Dolly did you have nightmares Dolly's gonna narrow her eyes no, because I don't have a guilty conscience. Y'all like newts? I just love newts. Have you seen the You're... posters out there? I designed them myself. The little, my little slogan, newts are hewt. H-E-W-T. <laughs> Thank you. You are awfully chipper, considering the way you spoke and acted last night. Oh, I don't know uh, what you mean. Dolly's going to look at Viv. Well, maybe. I'll tell the joke again. <laughs> and that's when the fox said, Joker, I hardly know her. <laughs> she laughs. She's I'm, I'm confused. She's laughing. I don't confuse. Um, well... Ahead, I love newts. I love newts. I can't get enough of newts. I've always wondered how 
They are taxidermied. Would you mind? They are truly. Please. Oh, no, not at all. Can I have a tour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dolly's just like, yeah, I got it, honey. <laughs> All right, so uh, she's absolutely, her face brightens up. Absolutely, here, come back here. And um, she, she gets lost in talking that she doesn't notice that Dolly's not following. Yeah, uh, I'm she's snooping. telling you how people, only people know about newts is that they're used, witches use their eyes for brewing, brewing potions, but that's ridiculous. They're far too small for potions. And then that's what you hear, Dolly, as they trail off uh, mm -hmm. and leave you in the office, which, of course, you're going to start meddling, right? I'm snooping. Snooping. <laughs> Let's do it. Roll it. Woo! A nine. Probably I'm plus kidding. one at least, right? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, it doesn't take you long. You're looking around a thing. There's a stack of papers on a thing right on top. It seems to be something she'd like is a um, uh, is a uh, is a court document, uh, <gasps> talking about suing the defendant as the the defendants being the um, Brindlewood Finn Newt Sanctuary and the uh. The people they're suing is the, um, uh, hold for it. <laughs> Fuck, why am I holding his fucking name already? Um, is the Gardner property, uh, <gasps> yeah. Gardner property, people, whatever I'd said. I'm Gardner taking property this. development, I think is what it was. I'm taking this. I'm taking <laughs> this piece of paper. It's mine now. Uh, apparently, uh, they are suing them because the uh, one as you scan through it, you see that there's uh, apparently Dan Gardner has plans to drain portion of the Brindlewood Fen, and uh, and and yeah, Amelia's company is suing them because of that. That son of a bitch. I still think that she might have murdered, but I'm taking this piece of paper. Okay. Can I, is there anything else that I find snooping around? Uh, nope, that's that's it. Other than lots of information on um, newts and uh, swampy fin stuff. Hmm. Science, hmm. science does she, stuff. Does she have any candy in her desk? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> those those um white like those hard ones with like white and a stripe of color, like just that. You mean you mean cream savers? No, not even that cool. Though the hard ones. Is it the, the soft peppermint? Soft like peppermint. Are they are... soft? I don't know. They just. Oh my god, they're little... so good. Oh. I mean, those are delicious. Are I'm good. filling my entire purse with them. I'm like just dumping the whole tray into my <laughs> purse. <laughs> delicious. Um, we're gonna cut now to uh, Ethel and Edith as they um, uh, so we're going to. Okay, so you guys not aren't quite sure where to find this guy, so you go back to town hall. Um, it um, it's still closed down, um, although it is open. It, you find that it's open, and uh, the place the 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 ballroom where you guys were wasn't hasn't been broken down or anything. Everything's still as it was. Obviously, the body's gone, um, and there's but there's nobody there. And so you go back into the kitchen area um, to see maybe, you know, uh, you know, if there's like a roster there. of, is there a roster of um, the people who were there with the catering event, like a schedule or anything that we could maybe find? Well, let me, let me say this. So you go into it's, you know, it's a, a kitchen chipped for mica countertops, cabinet doors, half the knobs missing an old stove. Um, and, um, it, nothing had been touched since last night. And Mike, uh, who obviously was the only caterer you saw, um, had uh, set up the prep area for that evening's, you know, do his refreshments. To paint the scene, what do you see here that's maybe a hint of his former life? And that could be either Edith or Ethel. Hmm. Hmm. Like uh, trying to think of what he would, what, what crimes he had committed. Well, and I also wonder if it's just like as simple as an apron 
from his past before he... We don't know if he was always a criminal. He could have been a chef beforehand, which is why he's in the catering business. Maybe it's an old apron that's got uh, his old job name on it. Maybe yeah, it's like, like business. barbecue bills or something. At least barbecue. It. Yeah, I like that. So it's got the logo of that. So maybe we could go check that out. Cause pretty sure I've heard of that place. Barbecue Bills? Oh, yeah, from the town center. Billy's Barbecue. What did you say, okay. Edith? It's a Billy's Barbecue. Yeah, Billy's Barbecue. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, Billy's Barbecue. Um, Billy's Barbecue is actually um, like a pop-up barbecue thing stand uh that comes oh, it f- comes like in a truck. yeah okay yeah 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 like it, it pops up um uh during the summer during the uh you know the tourist months and um there's always uh at one place down near the beach and so it just t- doesn't take you guys long to get there and sure enough you see mike behind there with several people doing the grilling and smoking and all that kind of stuff um he sees you coming, okay. kind of gives you a little, he goes, hey, I'm going to say something to somebody else and comes out around wiping the towel off, goes, ladies, what can I do for Hi. you? Unfortunate bench actually... last night, I'm really sorry. Yeah, it was. I actually um, wanted to track you down because I really liked that muffin, that muffin tray that you had last night. I would like the recipe on that, and I've got my little notebook already ready. <laughs> like, oh, that That's oh. why I'm here, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, actually, it was, quote, uh, my, that was my mother's <laughs> recipe, to be honest. Uh, oh. I can get that for you. I, um, I don't have it here, though. I don't, I unfortunately okay. I don't have it memorized, so I have to catch you some other time. I can give it to you, no problem. You got an email? Of course you do. Oh, You're yeah. You're a podcaster, yeah. right? That's- of course, yeah. And I got some questions for you, too, if you are not too busy for the podcast, of course, about your... Oh, what you saw course, last night. Of course. All right. All right. Okay. So you were there with the Fresh Up, right? Correct? The the charity that uh, Tony was there with last the night. The Fresh Start Our Foundation? Uh, yeah, well, that. I, I wasn't... I was there because of them. Yeah. If that makes sense. I, I got a job. You're with affiliated the, with... The Fresh Start yeah. got me a job here. Um, with the barbecuing and start help me start my own business. And that's the the catering. Okay, okay. And what is that? I f- I forget what the what it is all about. Like how? Why did they help you with the startup? Like try to dig into his past a little bit. Ma'am, ma'am, I had I uh, made some poor decisions in my past. Got in trouble with the state. Um, but uh, and then but I've served my time and got out. And I needed something to do, and it's kind of. Well, needless to say, it's a little rough coming back into the world. Uh, and uh, these people were kind enough to help me out. Right. Would you be comfortable enough telling me what you did in your past that would bring you to this situation of needy? This is all for the podcast, of course. It's a good story. Good storytelling. Ma'am, that's all in the past, and I really not liked. But I will tell you this. It was not murder. Okay. Okay, okay. I, I didn't suspect it was, but... <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he starts waxing about Brindlewood Bay. I love this town. It gave me a second chance when no other place would. That's what life's about, you know, second chances. Figure everyone's running away from something in their past. And for and some reason, he's staring right at you, Edith. <laughs> when he says oh. it. Not pointedly, just uncomfortably. And looks away. Oh, are you from somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I? Uh, I want to ask him about the Castelli. Uh, do you, in your past dealings, you don't have to obviously say specifics, but have you had any dealings with uh, the Castelli family from Boston? Oof, I know a few gentlemen serving time. Uh, that were connected to that guy. Why? I hope you're not connected. You don't owe that man any money, do you? Is that? Oof. Oh, not not us, but we yeah, do they, know someone the, might. What's gambling what loans? Oh, with? someone with gambling loans. You think that has something to do with a shot last night? I think it might. Yeah. I'm you think? Uh, you think that Ro- right Ace Rogers it. owed? Hmm. Interesting. 
Possibly, or the um, Maria Prescott may have, or you want to give me you know a, what? Give, anybody there could have really. You're, you're starting to warm him up a little bit. Why don't you uh, roll a meddling? He's starting to get his. Both of us. Uh, whichever, whoever wants to do it. Who's got an angle? Who's got an angle for a really good question right now? Or maybe one of you just asks, is there anything about last night that was a little weird or different? Right, did you like, see did you notice anything? anything? Like, yeah. I want to know from your point of view what you saw. Right. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a little afraid because I've been rolling really good all night and I'm, I'm going to fuck this up. <laughs> Do you want to roll or... Uh, uh, I, uh, you okay, okay. Really good. Oh, so you do it. No. <laughs> oh no. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Can I do the thing? Oh wait. Oh wait. What Why it? don't you do Help. this? Why? You know, you you've got um, you have not done it, but you have the gold gold crown mysteries move, where once per mystery you could say this reminds me of something that happened to Amanda Delacourt, and tell us what yeah. happened to Amanda Delacourt. Uh, well, one, you name the gold crown mystery in question. Um, the problem or situation Amanda found herself in, similar to this. And then how Amanda uh, overcame the problem. <laughs> Easy peasy. But then I'll give you a straight right. 12. Dang it. Okay. Um. Hmm. And everybody can help. Yeah, help me out, peeps. <laughs> I, I literally want to be like, oh, do you remember that uh, that book, The Murder at the Monte Carlo? But that's an actual movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> the murder at the uh, at the old Pope Saloon. Or, or um, uh, I was thinking of um, what's when you play blackjack in your. What, what happens when you break you uh when you you bust? You hit or, twenty-one or, or more. Delta murder, or you know what I mean? Like, I, I how about Dead Man's Hand? Because that's the name of this. Oh yeah. Remember Ooh. Dead Man's Hand? Yeah, that was a good one. Applebee's breakfast murder. <laughs> Not the Applebee's breakfast All right, murder. So remember Dead Man's Hand? What was Ma Amanda doing? What was the, what was the situation there? Was, was she, it the crime? The the crime one, right? The the mob. Yeah, the mob. Oh. They cut the man's yeah. hand off. Yes, and <laughs> oh. it was still holding the cards. Still holding and, the cards. Yep. But there was something in there where, um. Okay, so like uh, one of the help, what really cracked the case is one of the help, one of the waiters overheard a conversation beforehand. And so that's what sparks you to ask him if he had heard or seen anything um, yeah, beforehand. Sure. That's great. Right? Because he was. <laughs> yeah, that's good. He yeah. was going around and listening to people the whole time, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, right. That makes sense because he was catering. He was yeah. going to every was, table. It was the like. It was the yeah. It was the wait staff that really broke the case in Dead Man's Hand for right. Amanda. Um, okay. He goes. You know what? I thought. I thought there was something. You know, these these guys. Look, I am not a judgment person. Judgy person. I cannot afford to judge anybody. All right. I am not going to spend any time in my life and that kind of negativity or even chance being put back anywhere. So what I'm about to tell you involves people that I would hope that you would not bring me up. I cannot be held responsible for quoting this. I cannot be a witness. And if it comes back to me, I will say you are crazy old ladies and I've never heard you, that before. Okay. <laughs> okay. Deal. Yes. Well, we are crazy. Old I don't. Ladies, these yeah, these yeah. kind of tournaments bring out the worst in people. All right, that's this is everybody's got a little bit of something dark in them, and uh, I overheard something that I figured was just a uh, hey, help me win, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours type situation. It was um, what's uh, what's the the old lady, the lady, the uh, the the richy rich Maria, right, Maria. standing there with our with our mayor, and I remember her. Uh, they head off to the side. I remember her saying, 
uh, as I came up, she was saying, uh, just remember who's going to bankroll your, uh, your election, your, uh, or, um, mm. yeah, your, what do you call it? The, the whole his campaign. His campaign. Who's going to, uh, bankroll your campaign and you just make sure things go the way they need to go. And, uh, Ooh. he seemed pretty, uh, nervous about that. Uh, guy, I, I don't think the guy could lie to save his life. Uh, but he agreed. And then as I came up, they hastily changed the conversation. At the time, I thought maybe he was just like lose to her so she'd win the money. Mm-hmm. But now that we're bringing all this up and someone's dead, I don't know. Okay, that is off the record. I did not even enter it in my notebook. But I, I got to get back uh, to, to I got a brisket on. So I will be... Okay, I, I will be getting back to you about those muffins. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll cut back. Vivian and Dolly. Uh, Viv, you learned way more about newts than you ever imagined. In fact, your fight or flight response started kicking in about 20 minutes in. And you managed to say, you know, hey, I got to go to the bathroom really bad or whatever Viv would do to get the fuck out of that situation. You get Dolly and you're heading out on Beepus. You've, you've escaped. Um, do we want to meet back? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Uh, we meet back at the Maven's headquarters? Yes. <laughs> yes. So Dolly, are you beeping? Is that what... Is that yeah, that's, that's me driving Beepus. It's, it's a real bouncy ride. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are back at the uh, Murder Maven's headquarters. You guys have a lot of clues. Did you want to start theorizing? I got a theory. Or do you have... Or do you, theory, okay. too. I have a yeah. couple theories. All right. I seen that? I totally I totally forgot. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I don't, well, you know what? Yeah, screw it. We're gonna do this. We're gonna. I'm gonna do it live. Oh wait, never mind. It's all fucking worked out. Oh. For the most part. Ooh. Yeah. For the most part. Look at V's up there. Yay. I'm just gonna get uh, Vivian. Where's Viv? I There's am a right post it. Here. You are a post it. <laughs> Hey, stop <laughs> laughing, Steve. <laughs> Steve. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. We got lots of clues. <laughs> we'll put, okay. put them up as you name them and start trying to work them in. All right. We got a thigh bullet. Yep. Ooh, thigh bullet, right. Thigh uh, bullet. We got the um, the lawsuit. Yeah. We got the potty gun, potty pistol. Pew, pew. Potty pistol, and it was in the men's restroom. Mm-hmm. The potty pi- oh potty pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet pistol. <laughs> That's a thing in seven days. Toilet pistol. Potty pistol is now that. Alliteration's great. Mm-hmm. Pistoli. Potty pistoli. Love okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The lawsuit. Okay. Oh, the lawsuit. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Newt suing. Have the ledger showing Tony in debt. Yeah. 1-800-GAMBLER. Oh, he's a very dangerous person. Um, the mob. Do we do the mob yet? Oh, yeah, the mob. Well, Tony and debt. But that's, uh, like, the yeah. Tony and debt could be, this is two clues. It's Tony and debt. Tony, Tony and debt the mob. Problem. <laughs> um, okay. That the, the, what is her name? Melissa Maria. 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 Yeah, her and Meredith. She's she's uh paying for the campaign. Is that technically a clue? Yeah. I would say so. Yes, definitely. Bye bye. Well, yeah, it's it's not so much that this is the clue, it's the clue is how she was pressuring right. um, yeah. Merle. 
right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. Okay, Father else? J, you are uh, cut off. Cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the photo part, too, the photo. with the uh, ace. <laughs> Oh, Jay's got a gambling problem over here, too. <laughs> <laughs> you get to lose it all. That would be hilarious. Is there is there a chaos thing where you lose it all? All the gold you've collected this stream? Oh, my God. It all? Oh, that'd be funny. Okay, I'm a, I'll write that down. Okay. What if Father Jay uh, killed Ace Rogers? <laughs> <gasps> it was the town <laughs> preacher. It was the chicken fucker. <laughs> Alright, what am I missing? What, which one is this? Uh, uh, we have sources that say that a poker player had fleeced. Oh, right. Um, uh, people during at, a, at the Prescott residence. He's fleeced. Oh, and the counting cards. Maybe, maybe that's not a clue. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Oh, oh wait. Which one was this again? This was, um... The photo. What? No, the, um... Oh. Yeah, the... The one I changed, unfortunately. Oh. Um... Thigh bullet, potty pistol, gambling problem, Boston mob, well-known gambler, was teaching the Prescotts, um... Amelia suing the gardeners, um... And the photo. suing... I got a good theory. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. I think that Amelia meant to shoot Dan, but missed. Oh, because he was at the same table. And then she didn't know what their thighs looked like. Like, yes. Which was which. Yes. (laughs) That's really good. I love. Do you think she was under the table? (laughs) I think her hand was under the table. Because she had the gun there, and that's why she was all pursed lip because she was nervous because she had a gun. And she meant to shoot Dan, but she actually shot Ace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love the idea that it was an accidental... An accident. Mer- yeah, but I meant for really somebody like else. Like, I love there's that. A, there's a hole in your theory, though, Dolly. Tell me. This was during the final round, and it was Tony, you, Ace, and Merle. Oh, you. right, right. Okay, maybe not. Tony, Ace, you, oh, Dolly, and Merle. And Merle at the table. So, uh, lights did go out. Someone could have moved, shot under yeah. the table. Yeah, maybe. Maybe she crawled under the wrong table. Hmm. During, when the lights went out. Like, she, she doesn't, she strikes me as somebody who knows a lot about newts, but not about scheming. So maybe she turned the lights off, realized she had to, oh shit, I have to crawl under the table in the dark, and went under the wrong table and killed the wrong man. But who turned the lights out? She had to have a, a partner. <gasps> okay, oh, I have a theory. Multiple people have to have done this, because yeah, the lights. Oh my gosh, yeah, I love that. Because you couldn't, you couldn't have went, got the murder weapon if it was stashed in the toilet, turn <gasps> off the lights, and come back, done that, and then go back, turn on the lights, and put that away. That seems like a lot so for one I have person a to theory do. That would involve multiple people. Yeah, yes. We know that Tony was in debt to the Castelli family. What if De Castelli was at the Prescott residence when Ace fleeced all of those people and he was part of the people who were fleeced for all that money and Tony is in debt to him so he had Tony kill Ace in order to relieve Tony of his debt to him. And Maria, does anybody have a picture? Maria was not at the final. Sorry, we don't. I don't know if we have the picture. No, does it? Well, I was just gonna say, does it? Do you? Can you guys? Okay, so let's say we're just gonna narrate this because I love it. Let's say you were like, okay, and you, Edith, you dig around in some newspaper to find a picture of D D Castelli, and mm-hmm. you show it to Viv, and Viv's like, I remember <gasps> seeing him in that group photo. I think it's fucking fantastic. 
the yes yeah because you you saw the group photo with maria and mm -hmm. ace and the other i told you there was other people there Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes sense look um oh i i took a photo with my flip phone because you taught me Don't how worry. in the group chat. Oh, it's a <laughs> shitty picture because it's just a flip phone it's so see that smudge right yeah the, hold on mm -hmm. right yeah. there that uh -huh. smudge it I'm looks gonna hold up the newspaper clipping like there's similarities, of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, it looks just as menacing, yes, I agree. So replaying that scene, like um, Bev was profusely apologizing to her when you were looking at the stuff and you just had the time to get the phone out and snap and that's when the whole thing fell and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then Lurch grabbed you and pulled you out. But it was Bev profusely apologizing to Maria for your behavior and gave you the second to clip that picture. So now you've got the picture. Exactly. You dig around to find um, the picture of Di Castelli, and you find, yes, indeed, um, silver-haired gent, uh, dress looks like a mob and mobster in the picture, uh, but uh, easy smile. Yes. But yes, definitely, definitely could I'm trying be. To, I'm trying to link. I'm trying to link like the the lawsuit in. And we all know, like, developers usually have someone trying to... Well, Teamsters. Yeah. Teamsters, yeah. man. Teamsters Bob. always connect to the mob. Deli. Yep. Work in the union. There's union delegates, man. So we're thinking maybe... Um, maybe Dan turned off the light while Tony went to, went to murder town? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. And Maria had that large bag, so she had the gun in the bag, and she handed it to Tony. Oh, oh shit! We're all, we've got three people. Okay, so not is it Dan or, yes. or is it is it Dan, Maria, and Tony? Oh, yeah, God. they're in I it mean, together. We're nailing them all. Yes, yeah. really. The the villain is capitalism here, darling. But I think we could. <laughs> I think if yeah, we could put a mob. couple a couple old fogies in the in the bunch, that's all right, mm -hmm. right? All right, are we we digging this? All right, so yeah, let's, we're um, into okay, this. So now yeah. let's let's change these ones to relate to all the clues that you're going to be able to use in the role. So Merle with mm -hmm. Maria. Now, are we connecting Merle with this? Vaguely, yes. He's because he be should vaguely. know. He well, here's what we're going to end up. I think that they they knew he was like a loose end. Yeah, that's so what really I'm what too. they what they really they knew that he had loose lips. So what they they gave him the bare in, like bare minimum information because they know that he can't lie. They just want him to sort of corroborate like Maria and Ace not having any bad blood together. Mhm. Mm that's good. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, or um uh Maria just wanted to make sure well, so here's the crucial bit of all this, right? Merle saying don't to the sh hopper. Look, I don't want to embarrass Maria, get Maria Prescott embarrassed by connecting Ace Rogers to her having been fleeced by him. So let's keep that out of the news and keep that. It has nothing to do with this or whatever, right? Which is a key part of covering their asses because that brings the whole mobster connected to, you know what I mean? Which you guys just made mm -hmm. the connection, right? That's why, mm -hmm. but that's probably all Merle was, was she pressured him to like, you know, you just play by the rules. So maybe Merle knew, just knew enough, he, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we'll yeah. always be a little suspicious of Merle. Was he put in that situation? You know what I mean? Like how is he just, I obviously just had to do something for his career, He's, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of like black, I guess, would it be blackmail just to, I don't know, get him involved and make him be hush hush about it? And they would pay him. Yes, they're, they're holding money over his, his head, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. In order to okay. back him for mayor. So are, right. is Dan still involved in this? What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I'd say to, I'd say that there's Bob ties to developing here, like maybe mob yeah. money or. Teamsters. Yeah, the yeah, getting. I I think that there's some. If he's gentrifying and not a lot of people want that, there's got to be there, the money's coming from somewhere. So, 
really ultimately though we're trying to solve the crime of who pulled the trigger yeah okay we suspect well maybe not we only okay. suspect dan's in there just because he's a developer <laughs> he uh, doesn't have anything yeah. other than the real yeah, villain he, here you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay well maybe not Whereas maybe dan's not involved Ma maria has like we don't have any kind of yeah. motive for dan yet we have motive for sure for yeah. maria right yeah. we have motive, motive for, for tony 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 yeah right and then so then mm -hmm. it would be maria and tony right. maria smuggled the gun in in her bag Mm -hmm. gave it to Tony and then while they were Turn off the while light. Tony, Ace, Merle and Dolly were sitting at the table Maria went and turned off the lights Right. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah I like that alright what clues I have one two three four here what other clues are we putting the in photo. here the uh, photo oh Ace, Ace yeah Fleece. the photo That's, okay so this is actually two clues this is two mm -hmm. clues two oh, four, okay. two, four five, five, six. and then is there what's another six one Oh, never mind. I was going to say Merle with Maria. Never mind. Well, I mean, it's not. You know what? No, this actually was a good clue to house because it further made you suspect Maria because there was obviously some shit going down. Maria was mm -hmm. involved. So even mm -hmm. though it's not necessarily Merle, it's definitely a clue from Maria. Uh, what about the, the the gunshot, the wound? Oh, thigh bullet. Oh, thigh bullet. Yeah, 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 yeah. thigh bullet for sure. Nice cat. It was in yep. close proximity, so it had to be someone at the table. Yeah. But Maria, yep. but but she. Oh yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. That's exactly it. Yep. Perfect. Thigh bullet. That was my uh, band name in high school. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys just played Creed nice. covers. <laughs> oh no! Not Creed With covers. With all the open. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. The guys such love such hacky sack like energy. Me. I hate it. <laughs> Did you say What's hacky sack energy? Yeah, yeah, that was hacky no sack shit. energy. No shit. All right, so two, four, five, six, seven clues. Woo! So what you're going to be doing really is you're going to well. be making the, you're, someone's going to be rolling. There's going to be no pluses. Well, there is. You get the plus the amount of clues you have. All right, and then we minus mm -hmm. the complexity of the case, which is six. So you're going in there with like a plus one, basically. Who wants to make the roll? I've been rolling pretty good tonight. Or I feel it. I feel it. I, feel it. I believe in you. You got right. that rhin those rhinestone dice. Rhinestone yeah. cowboy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Here we go. Come through, rhinestone cowboy. No. What's well, oh, five shit. plus seven? Yeah. Minus so six. Yeah, Minus five six. plus seven is twelve. Minus six is six. Um, can I use a crown of the void? <gasps> uh, you cannot. Um, no, you Damn can't. It. There's, yeah, nothing can be used on this. Um, oh, oh, it can't. Okay, okay, okay. The success tier can be moved up, but only if all of you put on a crown. Okay. Okay. We're all putting a crown on. You all have to mark a crown. But that'll I'll move do it. it. That'll move but it from six order, to seven right? to nine. What's that? Like the crowns that are listed, we have to do them in order. That's only the void ones, the dark ones. The crown of the void. You uh, can do crown. Oh, of the so two we're three. doing. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, crown of the void gets when you. I mean, you could choose to do crown of the void if you want. You totally can. No, no, no. But those you no, have to do you. in order. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. But we had that. But that's basically what happens when you start running out of crowns of the queens. Mm. And then there's oh, sure. Okay. So uh, we'll start with the first person who feels like they've got something. I got it. Okay. Yeah, you go first. Uh, Vivian remembers that when she uh, did mouth to mouth on Ace, she blotted her lipstick on the napkin and she kept it in secret. So it's a scene in the present day showing how you satisfy your physical desires and it's just oh her God. stroking the napkin to fall asleep. Like... Beside her. Is that what we call it now? Oh, Stroking oh the napkin? Oh, okay. Stroking yeah. oh, yeah. the napkin. Yeah. Oh, right. It's, right. It's, right, right, right. Listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's her OnlyFans project. <laughs> Yo, yeah. But yeah, that's she's she's like as they're theorizing, she like has the napkin in her pocket, and she's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, fidgeting with it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Right. Uh, I've I've got one. Sure, Dolly. I mean, it, it's her uh, and random. 
is her and the old man, I'm just making this up, I hope you like this, Lich, her and an old man at the Bean who's recently moved to town, uh, and they'd be flirting with each other. Oh, okay. A whole lot, and she'd be thinking about that old man. <laughs> and it's a scene in the present day showing Why a burgeoning old romance. Man and you're hoping I would like it. Why do you keep saying? <laughs> <laughs> because I just made up an NPC. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this? Uh, okay, we need a name, and we need a name. Um, uh, who's this old man? Daryl. Daryl. Oh wait, what about Doctor Flowers? Oh, yeah, can I just use Dr. Flowers? Yeah, you were kind of sweet yeah. on Dr. Flowers. Well, yeah, but he wasn't really sweet on me back. Well, it's not, it's not well, really a burgeoning romance. Well, maybe you're working it. Oh. How, how are you oh, working yeah, okay. it? Oh, yeah, okay. Working it. She, um, she keeps coming up and helping him with all the raccoons. He's, mm -hmm. he's the one facilitating the raccoon therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. And she, she brings um, little treats for the raccoons and they like brush hands. Okay. Oh, I see. And so he's, he's warming up. He's getting used. He's, he, he calls you doll. What's up, <gasps> oh, doll? Oh, yeah. So yeah. You, you think there's a date coming up pretty soon. We'll, yeah. We'll check in next next episode to see if a date's happened with Dr. Flowers. Um, Ethel? Yeah, so I'm going to share a fondest memory of my late partner. Uh, so the way that he and I met was I was in a bookshop, a small bookshop, and uh, it was just right outside of town. And I didn't know this man, and he, woke, he walked right up to me, and he had the, the most goofiest pun ever. But he bought me a book, and then um, that's how we started talking and uh, we started seeing each other more and more at this bookshop and there may have been sexy times in one of the book aisles <laughs> well guy you yeah, guys just we love it. I mean that was a that was a kink because you've also had sexy time in the library you have like yeah you you and him yeah. used to go to the library a lot yeah yeah yep Wow. Picking out more than just books. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what's I, the, I like that. that what's is the, the Dewey Decimal thing for that? <laughs> 6.9, baby. <maybe. laughs> Night. Oh. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Edith, what are you sharing? <laughs> um, uh, a flashback of how uh, Edith was an imperfect mother, um, and it shows her um, with her stepson James, um, sort of you know that that sitting at the um, at the at the dinner table doing homework, and the parent is just getting so aggravated and frustrated because uh, the child's just like not getting it, um, and it just right. shows her getting sort of angry um, and clearly just expecting far too much from a child oh okay okay and then you kind of flash back to her with her grandson and sort of the way that she's goofy and fun with him sort of almost as if to try to make it up to her child and by having that sort of relationship with his child right right oh oh <laughs> okay Okay. Well, by sharing all these, thank you, ladies, um, you have moved it up to six to nine, which, uh, or seven to nine, which is the correct solution, but the computer will either add an unwelcome complication situation or present a complicated, dangerous opportunity to take down the culprit or save the day. Um, this is what's happened. You go directly to Sheriff Hopper and you share your evidence, the, your, what you've got and your theory. He thinks it's a little, it's a little fetched, but you know what? Um, he had also, they had also noticed that the bullet wound in the thigh was a little weird. It must have, they'd already thinking it must be, um, uh, have been somebody at the table at least that was their main suspects. And he, uh, while you're talking, he, um, he moves something away. You just kind of notice that it's something about Dolly. <laughs> he's just like, like, he's just, he's just like moving it away so you guys don't see it. That. You know, Dolly, you're one of the main suspects because of that. But based on some of the things you guys have found out, he thinks, you know, well, you know, let's look into Tony. 
uh, even more. And he heads over there, and of course you guys go too because you get to, we want to be there to confront him. We find Tony dead in his <gasps> chair, shot in the head. Um, yeah. Oh, they got to tie up who sends, man. And so, unfortunately, while you uh, might have been right, we won't know because the <gasps> trail ends there. You don't have any no. kind of evidence to bring Maria Prescott in, and there's no way the sheriff's gonna suicide his career and and going there and um, uh, accusing her of something like that. But the main witness, and so, but with uh, them finding out and digging around, they find that he did indeed owe a lot of money, and um, they found uh, um, gloves with uh, the powder burn on them and stash in a coat pocket in his home connecting him to the gun the firing so sheriff hopper is very happy in one respect to close the case on dead man's hand and and let you off the hook especially dolly however yeah. breaking the news to the students at the brenda wood high school was a different matter uh tony was well liked at at the school as a math teacher so it was a sad day in brenda wood bay